Well, hello, hello, everyone. Welcome back. Day eight of the slime experiments development. Well, I gone ahead. Not much to talk about in the beginning, so let's just switch over to our main screen here. I went ahead and got the uh, tile map for the orange level made. And then I brought our prefab over here. Let's go ahead and just rename this to 2-x. Uh, uh, and we'll make a prefab of this real quick like. So we want to grab that one. Make sure we're on the tile map lighter there. We want to grab one of these. I use the drag tool here. Now I think I think that we made the text box and dialogue that big. I want to say like this. Um, and then I need grab one of that, one of that. Let me just drag that over there and we can grab a that. Okay. I think that's what the uh, text box was before. Yeah. So let's let's go out to the canvas and we'll undo this. Let's just hit play just to check. Changed up a little bit. Need to make it a little bit longer, it looks like. Let's add, I think just two will do it. There. There, there, there. There we go. All right, so that should be our new outline. If I hit play, we're going to have to just adjust the... Uh, box here a little bit more. So we want to drag it a little bit. And here-ish, and then up a little, right? Let's see how that looks. Nice, we can make it a little bit bigger, like that. Okay, that'll work. And then let's just make sure that the text box is also bound to this region so we don't go outside if we make text big enough. Hello, losers. All right. Excellent. That works. We can go ahead and close this text box. What is this saying? Right, because I don't have the game world manager uh, woken up yet. Fine. And then we also have variable music of level select is not set, which is, yeah, that's true. And then an index out of range for this, which is auto talking dialogue, because we don't have any dialogue here. First of all, let's make this five, just so we have that error no longer showing up. Minimize that. Um, let's make this level name two dash, and then we'll just leave that. It'll be 11. And then we want to decide on our music for these next five levels. So let's see. Let's pause our current music and just kind of listen to some of these. I think this one will work. Okay, so what goes there, and then let's rename this to World 2. So that way we have it uh, notif not notified, we have it uh, noted that it's for World uh, 2. There. All right, so I think that's most of the errors that we had taken care of, other than the uh, same World Manager one, which doesn't really matter for this particular thing here. So let's go ahead and 
we'll zoom back into our tile map. We have a spawn point and the end point here and here. But all right. Outside looks good. So this is going to be our template for the next couple of levels. So let's go ahead and just drag this down, add it into our prefab window here. That we can just toss it back and forth. We can then unpack this one. And let's go ahead and call this one 2-1. 11. Excellent. And we also need to do... Ah, right. I should open this guy back up. Click on the end level. I'm going to drag this guy over to here. There we go. One last thing we have to do every single time. Adds up a little bit. So that's great. Man, I'm real upset. I had uh, tried to cook some bacon in the microwave, and it just did not work. I didn't know how to, how to do it, and I just kind of looked it up online. I didn't know how long to cook it for specifically. Obviously, I know how to put it in a microwave press buttons, but man, I really screwed the pooch there. So. What had happened is I overcooked it, and now the whole apartment smells like, like bacon. Really like pungent shit. So no longer cooking bacon in the microwave because that's annoying. Also, it was just a mess to do that. So I'm gonna stick to like pre-cooked bacon, even though it's a little more expensive. Having just raw bacon is like nasty. I've come to realize. So through all that noise. Anyway, now that my little rambler is done, <clears throat> let's go ahead and make this the proper thing for level 11. 2-1, level 11. Uh, the world 1 music, world 2 music, sorry. And... Hmm, it's all cool. So, in this level, we want to introduce the pressure plates. Because with the pressure plates introduced, it opens up just so much stuff for us. And we don't have to worry about much. So we'll be we'll be good. Right? I don't have to worry about all the like things that I worried about previously, where it's like, oh wait, I can't do that because and there's nothing stopping the player from yada yada yada. I can actually use the gates and the pressure plates and stuff like that in order to stop the player from doing things. Which is great. Okay. But first of all. Let's grab a place that we're going to put the exit. Hmm. Shall we just put the exit over here? It's right there. All right. Let's move the end level down to here. Go. No. Okay. I don't want to lay this level out. You know, I mentioned in the last video that I should really like between streams, like write out all the stuff that I like. I'm gonna put these here and make this like a plan. So when we get into the stream, I can just go bang, 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 and uh, finish the uh, the maps. Well, <laughs> I didn't do that. Uh, good times. Maybe one day. For now, let's just keep struggling through. All right, so let's grab our spawn point here. I think we'll just spawn them up in the uh, upper left here, probably right there. If we hit play, do I spawn there? Yeah. We spawn a little bit further down. You just spawn a zero zero, yeah? Just checking. Move them up a little bit further. Okay. So what we'll want to do is introduce a pressure plate. Every time I say pressure plate, I feel like I'm saying it wrong. I see. I feel like I'm saying pleasure plate or something. It, it, it's driving me loony. I know I'm not, but it's just like, what if I am? Like every single time I think about it, 
What is this error? It better not be the fucking graft error. Okay, it's the, uh... We don't have the uh, game world manager thing, so that's fine. Okay. So I think the first thing that we could do, potentially, is make a room with a couple of blocks and one of them. So, let me just hit play one more time. We spawn here. Right there. What I'm thinking, we do like this, and like that, and then we make a little hole. So we grab. A... Mm, is this the one I want? Because I can just use that one and that one. We can get rid of that and use that one here. Kind of open it up and then. What I want to do is make a, uh, box here. It's like that. And what we'll do is we'll put a pressure plate in here. And Go ahead and do that real quick. So we want to make the items default parent. Throw a pressure plate in here. So pressure plate will be there. And then a gate will be hidden here. However, we're gonna have to actually uh, take this gate, go to our assets, open this bad boy up, and we want to change the sprite on the gate so it matches the color of the walls. Otherwise it would be blue. Fine, but do that for every single gate we make. It's gonna be fun. Okay. We then want a movable block right there. And once again, where's the player spawn? Right there. Why is it to the left? That should be centered above the block now, right? Yeah. Well, it's a whole block down. If I do that right there, that means I spawn in the top square, right? Yeah. Okay. So basically the center point is a whole square below where the marker's going to be. Got it. Let's spawn him right there. Put that there. Okay, so I think we need to edit the pressure plate script again. So we're going to go serialized field game object, but it's going to be a list of game objects. And it's going to be objects to change. 
Hopefully. So, hide that. I think that doesn't matter. Want to check else? Yeah. Um, create a boolean. Called is multiple. Is multi objects. Then we'll just do is multi object equals true. We want to do. That is the problem, isn't it? If I just reset them here, it would... Because I want to use the gates. I want to put like multiple gates in. So like one starts active, one's inactive. And if I do that, and I just go through and do one reset, it's not going to work. Didn't I have the gate? Active at start, right. So the gates themselves I can turn off. I don't have to do that. So we can just, first of all, active at start is false for that one. Let's just remove this. Let's not worry about resetting that. Let's just worry about what we're doing here. So if one object equals true, we don't care about that. We then want to do an else if is multi object equals true. What we want to do is go for each game object G in uh, objects to change, right? For every object in G, we want to do if g dot active self equals true we want to do g dot set active false otherwise if it is already true or if it's false we want to set it to true so there we go so basically we just do the opposite that way we can toggle different doors on and off and whatnot i'll show you what that's for here in a second Basically, we just want to grab this, add this to down here. With multi objects. We just want to do. I guess we just leave it the same because, yeah, we want to. Basically, do the opposite. Yeah. All right. So essentially what that will do, let's go ahead and open up the pressure plate. We're going to do is multiple objects. Um, let's add the vertical gate. Boop. And then let's add another prefab for a horizontal gate here. Weird. Of course, we need to update the sprite. Like that. And then we can click on the pressure plate again. Add this gate to it. There we go. Which then, when the pressure plate gets triggered, it will turn this gate on, turn that gate off, so the player can exit. Right. Very simple. Let's go back to our tile map to make some more walls here. We need to make, oops, not like that. Make that wall a little longer. And then for this one, just do like that and that. Sort of get us out there. Okay. Or, do I want that? Maybe I want a little more space or something. Hmm. Okay. 
think that'll be fine. So if we hit play, we'll spawn in here. We can go around and then get trapped in here. Or apparently we can uh, trigger that. That's messed up. Right, because I changed the hitbox on the uh, pressure plate, didn't I? <laughs> well, I think I can take the vertical gate. And if we unhide this and we turn off snapping, I can just move it down further. So like here. And now if I push the block down, I shouldn't get trapped inside of it. Right. Oh, well, I have to turn that gate off, first of all. I could have just turned it off in the editor. Mm. Then we can get out. Yay. player gets trapped in and they're gonna have to reset the level. <laughs> Excellent. So let me see what happens if we do as a player go down there. Yep, okay. I wasn't sure if we'd have enough space to move out, so. They'll get stuck in there. I guess you don't really need that gate technically because if you push the block down it's gonna be stuck in there, you can't pull it. Um, but I just think it's nice to show that the pressure plate can affect multiple blocks. So, yay. Okay. Now then, with that little room finished, what do we want to do in the next area? So, we want to use more pressure plates. This level is going to be pretty pressure plate heavy, I think. So, Let's make sort of a hallway. So let's do something like this. And then we'll go a little longer. Do it like this. Yes, I know there's no gap there. I'll change that in a second. Let's put a hole here and a hole here. I can delete that block. Perfect, perfect. A little corner piece there. And yeah, I don't have a double corner piece here, unfortunately. So what I could do, double this wall thickness. I do that, that, and that, there we go. That'll be our, our little thing here. Okay, so the second room, what we want to do, and keep in mind, we can have multiple pressure plates affecting the same gate, which is what we're gonna do. So over here, we're gonna have this, and then we're gonna take a pressure plate over here they're over here. There we go. When you hit that pressure plate, it's going to say through you and seal this door off. So let's make this activate start equals false. We're going to hide that one. Grab this pressure plate. We're adding that one to object to change. Right? Because object to change, it's only going to affect this one pressure plate for right now. Okay. We also want to check one object. Okay, so that'll toggle it on or off as we get on and off. However, however, ever, um, will this work? I don't know. We shall see. We want to grab another pressure plate, which will also affecting this so we'll just go ahead and use the same one and let's put it like right 
here. We could actually add a couple of pressure plates, like dummies that don't do anything. Mm. Maybe I just put it like here. And then we have to put a, uh, a block like here. Then I can make kind of like a, uh, a maze that the player has to get it through, I guess. That still has that gate attached right. So we put a pressure or a thing on the pressure plate, which turns the gate on. And then when we're standing on this pressure plate, it makes it so the um, pressure plate disables the door. Will we have enough time to get through is the question. I might want to unsnap this and then just move it up like that. That way you will have enough time to get through, but then you just can't go back. So try that. Let's see. Create some more of these guys. How about one here, one over here. One here, one here. I'm just kind of doing them randomly at the moment, so. So, if I say, like, these are the blocking elements, you can push the block up and then over to here, and you can push it down to here and then over to here, and then. Yeah, I think you're screwed. I need to remove this block. Okay, let's reselect the stuff here though. Okay, so push it up, push it all the way over, push it down to here. You can then go around, push it over to here, up here, and push it down. Yeah. That makes sense, I think. Okay, so let's try this part out. See how it goes. So push that one down. We're gonna push this one down over. We'll push it up. Push it over. Push it down. Go around. Actually, before we do that, how about we test? What? It says object to manipulate has not been assigned? This has. Why is it object to manipulate? Is one object uses right. When do I use object to change? Hold on. Let's look at this code. Dude, I fucking just made some spaghetti code here. So if it is one object, I'm gonna search if it's a movable object, a movable block, an enemy, or a gate. The gate is then going to do this with object to manipulate. When it's down here, object to change is going to do basically the same exact thing. Jesus Christ. Okay. The pressure point script makes no sense. No sense at all. In terms of the flags and Stuff like that. Um, it's 
So I don't think this code here even matters. So is object change ever used? Otherwise? So object to change. There. Here. And obviously here. But that's not correct either because if one object oh that's not that's true. Okay. But that also would not disable the object to manipulate. Before we do anything else here, let's go back to our level that uses this pressure plate. You use the object to manipulate. Okay. And that's the only other time I'm using a pressure plate. Right? Yeah, I'm using one here. And this one uses object to manipulate. Okay. Yeah, we're going to remove object to change, which is going to cause some errors since now it does not have this here. But now, yes, okay. I think I can just change these here. So if one object equals true. But no, I don't even need that. Because if it's just a singular object and we reset the level, the enemy gets reset on his own. The gates get reset on themselves, and the movable block just gets to destroy it and respond. So that's fine. I have another error somewhere. Right there. In the reset level, which doesn't matter. Okay. Well, well, shit. That should make things a little more easy, so. Basically, we just care if we're doing one object or not, and then, yeah. Okay. That should make things a little bit easier to understand now that we don't have all this other nonsense. Okay, so... This should be object to manipulate. We want to move in the closed horizontal gate, right? This one also. We want to move the closed horizontal gate. Nice. Okay, so now, if I test this out, and I'm just moving this so we can use it in the future. Okay. I do need something to turn it off, right? Okay, hold on. Let's toggle it off for now. Okay, so if we exit, um, if it's multiple objects, do that, else, uh, which the only other else would be if it's a single object, um, we want to take if collision dot game object dot tag. Uh, no, 
This should be the object to manipulate dot tag equals gate. Because really, we just want to do this for the gate, right? Um, and then we just got to do this and then replace the G with object to manipulate. That way, just does the opposite. There we go. Okay, so now if we save. We press that, and we get off. We can go back on. Up. So now, if we push this down, it should toggle that, which means we can turn that off, and then... <laughs> That's fun. Okay. Okay, so let's... Go to the pressure plate. So I know I made the hitbox for the pressure plate smaller because we wanted to mess with the... Uh, because I thought I was messing with something. Let's just make it bigger again. I think if we make it just a little bit bigger, our player should be able to make it past the gate before it closes. We'll see. Nope, still not big enough. Okay. Let's look at this pressure plate here. In the scene. And let's grab this. a bit bigger then. Now let's try it. It's still doing it. Okay, darn. You know, we could introduce another new block here. The inverse block, which wouldn't solve our issue with this. So if we take the inverse block and put it here. Jeez, I didn't realize the inverse block was so fucking big. Change it to 0 0.8, just like the movable block is. Okay. So with the inverse block, now we will have the ability to open the gate. And while dragging the inverse block, it should allow us to get past So obviously the player's first reaction would be to like push this, but then they're gonna figure out, oh, when I touch it, I uh well apparently I just lose my fucking mind there. What the fudge? Oh my god, the inverse block is just such a mess. Hmm. I'm gonna have to mess with the inverse block again. God damn it. I mean, now, yeah, if we, uh... I go back into the scene, move the inverse block away, and I come up here and be like, do that. That's not what it's supposed to- what? Draft! Help! It's not supposed to be off, I guess, because I... That's why that somehow? I don't know what I did, but that's supposed to be open, yeah? Yeah, so if I 
too bad. I can just do it like. Is it because it triggers? Oh my god. <clears throat> it's because it can happen multiple times, so. Do I ever use is touching? I never use is touching. this even <sighs> so if I do something like in here if I set is touching to true meaning that someone is touching the block um, when I exit it's gonna set is touching to false, which means it can be touched again. Yeah, I think that's what I want to do. So in here, just if is touching equals true, or I guess does not equal true. So we don't want to do this unless... Um, we're not touching before. But once we go into here, we want to do is touching equals true. And then when we leave, we want to do is touching equals false. Give that a try, shall we? We'll mess with the inverse block later to determine what the hell's going on with it. I, mean, I know what's going on with it, it's padly coded. Why? You fucking shitty ass fucking game. Who fuck made this game? Okay. First of all, get rid of the fucking inverse block. Let's move this pressure plate up to here. So, I don't think this is going to do anything then. I could make three pressure plates and then have the gate be active by default. And then you put a block on there, but it does nothing yet because that's just open up. Shit. Or I could just make three gates that just are on top of each other. And then when you put a lock on one of them, it'll disable it. And then do that for multiple. Yeah. That's probably going to be the way we're going to have to do this. So this one, go ahead and start as active. And I guess at this point it doesn't matter whether or not it is snapped. So paste that for gate two. We're going to grab gate two and put it down here. And we have two pressure plates and they each affect the gate. So we'll want another movable block. So let's put this one down here. You push this one up and then over. You push this one up down, 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 and leave it there. Man, I think this is going to be really cool when I do this. And it's like, huh, I can't do that. 
or like I didn't code this properly. So I ah, uh, hate to see it. Okay, so here is that the inverse block. Let me see your code. This is what I'm doing to find that, right? God, it's going to be another, like, figure out where the block is kind of thing. Okay. Okay. Let's get our... Why do I have notepad? Why did I close it? Incidentally, let me open this thing. Do you guys want a recipe for peanut butter cookies that I found online and then have not made because I don't have eggs. Bam, there you go. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Combine a cup of peanut butter, creamy, usually, uh, a cup of brown sugar, packed, and one large egg. Scoop it into one inch balls on parchment paper. Use a fork to score the cookies. Bake for 12 minutes. Cool for five minutes. Remove the cooking tray or remove the parchment paper from the cooking tray so the cookies are still on it, and then cool for another five minutes, and then enjoy your peanut butter cookies. There you go. I learned something today. All right. So, right, left, up, down. Okay. Let's go ahead. First, we need to make a debug.log that does direction and yeah okay save that that should be all I have to do to grab this I guess I just want to make the values narrower for this, right? Let's put this here. So there's more space down there to use. Let's hit play. I'll just move my guy down there. Open up the console, clear that error because they don't want to see it. Meow. Okay, so if we are on the left, that's what we get. So, or if we're on the right, we're getting that. So it looks like we're getting from 0 0.60, uh, 0 0.60, to we go down here, or 0 0.85, 0 0.8, I guess, 0 0.8. Then if we're in like the middle, we get 0 0.85, and then over here to 0 0.80. Hold on. Got the right value. So 85 for the X. 0 0.6. Is that? I want to like narrow the value to like right, like in the middle-ish area, right? So if we go 6 to 8 in the middle there, that should work. So let's move this away. I guess I should check the Y value as well, just in case. But let's push it a little, let's pull it this way a little bit further so we have more room to look at it. Okay. So starting here, we are at 0 0.65, so 0 0.65. If we go up a bit, we are at 71, and up a little bit further, we are at 0 0.8. So 0 0.80. 0. Okay. So when they're on the right, these are the values that we get and we're between, it looks like. Okay. Simple there. So 
Let's check the left side now. We'll just go ahead and pull this all the way over here. So on the left, we're getting a negative five, there's negative 0 0.58 two, and also a 0 0.81 two. Go down a little bit. That goes to seven three and seven six. That would be negative zero point seven six seven five, I think. And then the other value is zero point six three five comma zero. So those look like the values for the left side. Now let's try the up value. So up is going to be negative 0 0.12 and it looks like uh, 0 0.99. And then if we go to the right side of here, we are at 0 0.12 and also 0 0.99. What happens if we're in the middle? It's like one. I guess if we're between 0 0.99 and one, we want to pull the block upwards. Yeah, okay. Now for downward movement, over here, so that's what we got for, for one. So for down, we are at one, or one point zero zero two comma, and then we're at 0 0.042, comma, zero. If we go over to the left, pull it down, we are at negative 1.00 to 0 0.06. If we're in the middle, just to make sure, I think the down one was complicated. If we're in the middle, we get like that. We get 0 0.98 comma 0 0.2 So these are the values that we're getting. The other ones didn't really seem to change in the middle, other than down. Down is freaking weird. So those are the values we got this time. Let's open up our thing here and see how they differ from what we're using. So we're using on X, or for, a, for the right side, we were using 0.5 up until 0 0.9, which is a huge value difference. Um, so let's change this to, whoop, I forgot that happens when I do that. Let's, let's narrow this field down to 0 0.6 and 0 0.8. And then for the Y value, I think as long as we're, no, I should change this, right? Should I change this? Does it matter? It sort of does. So I could just say, as long as that's greater than 0 0.65, since we have 
6.5 value here being the least, and then 80 being the highest. We can at least do that. And then for the left one, we got negative 0 0.75 and then negative 0 0.58. So, let's change this 90 to 75. Now I'm actually gonna move this one to 5.8 or the left side, and then for down, we got basically negative, tw or negative 0.12 to 0.12, which is a huge difference in what we have here. So, negative 12, 12, and then for the other one, I'm gonna make this an else if as well, rather than just an else, because there are some values that could throw it in there. That might be what was causing some weird wonky issues. So this one should be, and I'm just gonna copy the thing everything else has, so I don't have to retype this again. How did I manage to do that on the outside? <laughs> Whatever, anyway. This should be negative one F to one F for the x value, which does technically cover everything. Actually, the only three values I saw for that were 0 0.98, negative one, and one. So what I could do is do if it equals that and change this to be an or instead and add another or copy this paste it there do 0 0.98 that way we would cover all three of the major things we've seen for the down movement and i don't think that would interfere with anything else right so that's stops at 80 um, nothing else goes past one or like nothing else includes one of either plus or minus areas. Oh, well, that one just includes zero. Yeah, so I think that would work. And honestly, at that point, I don't need to worry about this one. I don't need to have that there. Because nothing else gets between 60 and 80, right? Those are all negative. Those are there. So yeah, get rid of that line to check. Let's hit save. And I'm not sure if we need to reload, but I'm going to do it anyway. Just to see what happens. Just to make sure we actually load the script again. Okay. So we're pulling, we're pulling, we're pushing down here. Why are we pushing down here? Because it is at 90? <sighs> Maybe that's just because the cube is letting me do it. Like, because... Because it's like a normal block at this point, right? So it's letting me push it like a normal block. Oops. I fucked myself here. Go dig. Okay, don't get close to walls. I'll watch it pause there. Okay, so let's try this side. Yeah, so now we're like, whenever we get close to a side. Also, the down one just didn't even fucking work at all. Even though it's like equal to one right now. Hey, buddy, you equal one. Why are we not pulling it down? 
What? Hey, I'm equal to negative one. Is it because negative one and... God, there's such a huge fucking range between the things here. Maybe I should use the Y value for the, the down one. So it looks like we're between 0 0.02, let's go with like 0 0.03, and then 0 point, fucking, Jesus. Why do the numbers have to be like so fucking crazy? There has to be an easier way to do this, right? has to be. Let's try this. So if this doesn't work, I don't know what the hell will. Oops. making some adjustments to my thing here. Okay. So I made this now. Little four things here. The, the problem is the block is not doing what I want it to do right now. So uh, I'm trying to have it so whenever you like run into a block, it's like the opposite of what you are normally doing. So if we, if we start it up here, what is supposed to happen when you're on the, the left side of the block here, when you're on the left and you like push D, or like run into it, it's supposed to move you and the block to the left. So it does like the opposite of what you expect, right? If you're above it and you're pressing D to move downward, it takes you up. And if you are below it and press uh, W, it takes you down. Go over here and press D, it takes you to the right, you know. So that's what it what I want it to do. However, because there's like so many different values that it can be when you're like moving it around, it's, it's just not working. I need something that tells me if I'm further to the right, further to the left, further above, further down in the other directions, basically, to determine that. Um, I don't know why I just hit undo there. Actually, I don't even need to be like in this. So, inverse block, and we'll grab another inverse block. Let's, let's set this to be like, kind of like a force inverter, I, I don't yeah, like a force inverter, I guess. That one there. Okay. So we're at five, negative two. So below let's see. So the players below their y value is less. So Players above, the y value is going to be higher. The players to the right, their y value should be higher, or their x value should be higher. Otherwise, if they're left, it'll be lower. Um, move these two down. There you go. However, if we are, say, like in a position like that, X is still going to be higher. However, Y is also higher now. Hmm. 
Maybe I can do that. If I take the difference in the x values, the difference in the y values, and I can then determine which one is bigger, because the one that's bigger should be the direction that they're in, right? So if we have, like, like right now, we have the, the main block being here at, um, so we're to the right and down, we'll just do this. Um, we're at 6, negative 3. And the other block that we're trying to move would be at 5, negative 0 0.5. And if we take those values and we just kind of subtract them, we would get one comma uh, zero or negative zero point five, right? Which would mean the one is still higher. Which I mean, since it's negative, I guess we would just need to use a. Uh, I guess it's negative, it would be a positive one, right? Negative two minus, it was a plus. No, that's right. We just need to like, absolute value it. And then that would be that. And then the one that's higher, we're on the right. That's correct. I think that's what I need to do. It would work for the right side, at least. For example, let's take the... Um, that would give us... Direction. Let's remove normalized. And this would just give us the player minus the object. And so, yeah, I was just trying to do without doing a lot of math, really. So, um, so let's get the uh, float x equals and then float y equals. We want to do dir dot x and dir dot y. I could probably just combine this into like one statement, but where's the fun in that? Um, is it math dot, let me look here, minus math dot abs, that's what it is, okay. Yeah. Boop. Boop. Okay, so that'll get the absolute value of both of those values. And then we want to use the gonna be subtracting the player from the block? Or the block from the player. I think I need to take the player minus the block. Or the, the block minus the player, actually. We'll figure it out. Anyway, let's uh let's hide this code. Let's just let's just hide it real quick. Let's get rid of the debug there as well. Um and let's make some if statements. So if if x is greater than y, we'll do debug.log on the, let's just do right. Else, debug.log left, is that what I, no. That works in two directions. Hmm.
I need Because it's not as simple as this. I need to find the x and the y values. I need to find if it's up and down, or left and right. Which means, I think first I need to check to see what, like, we're in to begin with. We need to check, first of all, the direction. And... Yeah. So I think we want to keep this here. And this would tell us if we're going... Basically, this statement would tell us if we're either right or up. Otherwise, we're going left or down, essentially, right? Because it's an absolute value, we just we just don't know. No, that's not right. I hate thinking. That in it. That in it. Because they're absolute values, that it wouldn't matter. Let me just erase this for a second. Okay. So let's just think in terms of this value. Okay? So, let's say the cube is in... Can I... Um... One second. Let's open up, sorry for the flashbang, y'all. Let's open up a, a, a spreadsheet here, okay? And let's make these a little bit thicker. So, uh, resize rows, let's go with like that, that's fine. Oh, that's not fine, same size. Let's make these 30. Okay, so let, let's focus on the upper left here. So, if we're in the center, we're gonna be at zero, 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 right? Let's, uh, let's center these. There we go. All right. If we're in the upper left, we would be at... It would be, uh... Negative one, one, zero. Right? Above, it would just be... Zero, one, zero. The upper right would be one, one, zero. I don't know why that's a two over there. That should be just a one. If we're to the right, it's gonna be one, zero, zero, right? To the left is gonna be negative one, zero, zero. To the bottom left, it's gonna be negative, negative one, negative one, zero. Just down is gonna be zero, negative one, zero, and over here is going to be uh, one, negative one, zero. Okay, so those are the, f like, different points that we could be at, right? So... If we are to the left, the value of x is always going to be negative. If we're on the right, the value of x 
always going to be positive. Okay. Be right back. I'm going to throw something away real quick. basically want to do with this is use this to figure out what the value of the player would be relative to the block, right? So if we are at 0, 0, obviously the player's value for x is going to be higher than the um, blocks. So if for example, we say that our um, x value, for whatever reason, is negative 20. Actually, I can just do 20 and then negative, right? And then we take the player, and we take minus, and they're at 19, or negative 19, right? So we do 19 negative. That gives us a negative 1. So... Does that help me? Does that help me? Because I think then if we do, for example, that was uh, over here, let's just do like negative one or like negative 20 minus negative 19. It's going to surround the, uh, the negative values. So that way we know we're negative there. So we get that, right? And let me actually just cut this. And I'll paste it here so we move it over one. And then if we're at negative 20 minus... Oh, damn it. <clears throat> negative 20 minus negative 21, that's going to give us, is it one? No. 20 minus 21, it was one. So what should I be doing here? begin with. Okay. I think I get it now. What we want to do first is check. Oh my god, this is going to be a pain in the ass. So, first we'll check if How about vector three PV equals player dot transform dot position, and then vector three TV equals this dot transform dot position. Why do I have a red squiggle there? What do you mean you expected a bracket? What do you mean? What?
what bracket are you expecting? Equals, I guess, new? What? I'm just gonna erase this fucking line. No. What do you mean, bro? Is there a mismatch parenthesis somewhere? I didn't delete a fucking parenthesis. Wait. Where is that? That. What? Was that the issue? There was just like a freaking parenthesis over there? Okay, whatever. Anyway, so we're gonna have our transform in positions, right? So what we want to do is we want to check first if PV dot X is greater than TV dot X. This will determine uh, that the player is to the right. Else, player is to the left. Then, we want to do if tv.y is greater than tv.y. This will determine that the player is above. Else, player is below. Okay, so that's how we determine what direction the player is using those. So that'll give us uh, two values, left or up, right or down, right? Okay. So. What do I do next? I guess I could take this and nest it in here. Right? So, we'll check the x value. And if the x value is higher or lower, we'll know. So we can do player is on the right side. Over here we'll know player is on the left side. Okay? And now, what we want to do is use that to determine that the player is above or player is below. And then we need to check to see that something. So we will take this to get the absolute value of x and y and We then do if x is greater than y, we know that the player is more to the right. Else, player is more above. And similarly, here, we want to check player is more to the right, player is more below. Okay. So that's how that works. And we just want to do the same thing here. Player is more to the left. And then player is more to the left. So I think that does it. That is what we needed to do. That is way more stuff than I wanted to have to type out, but okay, so debug.log. Right. Right. Above, 
above. Below. Below. And then left and left. So now we can test this to see if this works. Jesus Christ, I spent like an hour on this, haven't I? Okay, so let's remove one of the inverse blocks. Probably that one, because it's not there. Okay, so let's hit play with my player down. And we'll see what happens. Okay. So, I should be on the right. Well, I just said I'm above here, so that's great. Why is it so hard? Because I'm I'm a hundred percent more to the right than I am above, right? Player, son of a bitch, it's because the fucking player is not at the right coordinates. Because it's looking here for the coordinates, not here. I think I'm just gonna do the redo. Redo the fucking player sprite. What the fuck to do? The whole time, that's what's been throwing me off, I think. I think my old code would have worked, except it's looking here, right at this spot for the player. So, in reality, the player should be. I was looking there, the player should be a whole, like, negative one lower. I guess I could just do that over here. So we need to do vector three dot pv dot y minus equals one. Or I guess just pv dot minus equals one. So, because regardless, we're gonna be one square down all the time, right? At least we're centered, so we don't have to worry about the x value. I can just try this and see if this works. <sighs> okay. Give it a whirl. Okay, so click in the game now. We're to the right. Yep, we're to the right. To the right. To the right. Okay. How about now? We're we're above. But we're a little bit to the left here, but I think that's fine. Over here, we're on the left, left, left. Down here, we're below, below. Okay. I think that'll work. There's a little bit of confusion at the edges, but that's, that's okay. Or is it? Why don't we? I was thinking, if I ignore the values of, uh, oh shit, like if I were to round up to a certain value of them, right? Like to the nearest like tens place or whatever, it might eliminate some of that questionable area. 
screw it. I think it's fine. All right, so if we're on the right, we want to do this. Okay, if we are on the left, we want to do this. If we're above, we want to do this. Below, do this. Let me copy that. Thank you. Okay. I think I can just get rid of this huge nonsense and replace with this huge nonsense. Okay. Jesus Christ. Okay, so now... If I hit play, I should see a reaction from the cube every time that I am touching it. Yep. Yep. And yep. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. One thing, however. Make it just a bit smaller. There we go. That way it can actually fit between things a little bit better. Right. Okay. So I think we have the inverse cube problem solved. Excellent. Oh. By the gods. I'm not even going to use it in this frickin' level. But it works. But it works. But it works. You know... No, I was thinking maybe I could get rid of the testing space and just work in a game world so I don't see this error every time. But I think if I did that... The game world code would run every time, which is not what I want because the game world manager on Awake, it uh, does this, which would load up a new map. So that wouldn't be great. Okay. Just the finished level script is... Trying to grab that. Which is not necessary. So I'm just gonna, real quick, I'm just gonna comment that out for right now. And we'll just hit save. That way we don't have to see that error every single time. We'll just have to remember to uh, uncomment that out. So I'm actually gonna make a note here. Uncomment out. Line 33 in. Final level script. Did you never want to accidentally forget to comment something out? Or we're back in, I guess? Oh my god. Like, all of my brain power is just like spent from trying to figure out the left, right, up, down thing with the fucking stuff, man. Damn. Okay. So. We now have this awkward shaped area. And I was thinking I could just fill this whole area in and then just use this only. But, but, what if I didn't? Let's grab our tile palette and make some more uh, these here. Uh, and I need one. So, boop, 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 boop. 
Bloop. Uh, and then this one goes here, there, and that one goes there. Then we get our one from there. And then it's this little thing, which I can't do because I don't have a thing for, so we're just going to make that one like that. Yeah. Or I could do like that for it. Okay. We'll just, we'll just do that for now. So, how do we use this area efficiently? Hmm. I could put like another gate here, I guess. What would be the purpose of doing that, right? Hmm. Is there something I could like slam into this area that would be interesting to do? I could potentially just have conveyor belts in here that take a uh, lock and then put it on a pressure plate somewhere down here. I can do that, show that even a block being pushed by a conveyor belt would trigger a thing. And then I can put a gate in front of the exit for that one. Which actually sounds like a good idea. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's grab a why uh why is, why is that happening? Hello? Okay. I don't know why I was switching to that. That was bizarre. Anyway. Uh let's I made the new tile maps with this thing included into it. So I keep looking down here for them. They're actually up here and it's annoying the hell out of me. Okay. Um, I don't have any horizontal gates here, unfortunately. Or vertical gates, I mean. So we're going to have to copy one from this location. Do that. Go to Inspector. Go to Assets. Open this up. Copy in our new sprite. There we go. Okay, and this one is active at the start. That one, fine. Those are fine. Actually, I need to, I think, switch these because they are not active at start. They are now. There we go. Okay. So, let's go ahead and we will grab another pressure plate. And let's set it like over here in the corner and then we want to take this and put it into the object to manipulate here okay now we want the conveyor belts so we need left and then rotate this 90 degrees or 180, sorry, I'm dumb. Copy, pick. All right. Copy, paste. 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 And let's change all these values to be three, just so it moves a little bit faster. Let's copy another one, move it over here and then do negative 90 to send this one down and the block on to the pressure plate. And then we can grab a movable block and put it here and hope that the player isn't stupid enough to walk over and get themselves trapped in the conveyor belt. They probably could be. But I might actually change these first couple of conveyor belts back to two. And then they'll just go boop, boop, and all the way down there, right? 
that way the player, if they do get over here, they can come back and walk out. So if we, if we press play, they should be able to visibly see the pressure plates, conveyor belts, moving at a bit of a slower speed over here. So that way, the uh, player can kind of know that, oh, I can get out from there. But what I want the player to do is push a block down there so that way they can just exit. You know? You know? Uh, 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 oh. No, you know what? Screw the player. Screw the player. If they're stupid enough to go down a path that looks like they can't get back, they can reset the level for all I care. <laughs> Why do we gotta be nice? I mean, after all, I made a, a trap down here for them where they uh, can go and potentially get stuck. Screw the player, in fact. Screw them. Yes, yes. Okay. So that will open up that door. Then what do I do in this space here? Hmm. Well, first of all, I need to have a movable block somewhere. The player needs to move and push into there. But I could just do another room full of, like, things to prevent them from just doing easy, like, segments like that. I have to go, like, up, push it over there, down and around like that, I guess. I don't know. We do have the, the, the block void we can use to do stuff as well. Yes, yes, yes. As long as we don't want to push it down. Does having this one here help or hinder? What if I put that one there? And they have to do like that, and then that. They can do that, that. I mean, regardless, they have to do that, and then they have to go around there and do that. I think it's fine. I just need somebody to delay the player for a little bit. To make them have to, act, have to actually do stuff. Because uh, having like one minute sometimes for every single level is not going to work. Especially if it's taking me like 30 minutes to make uh, each level. And if it's taking me like 30 minutes per level and I have 50 levels in total, it's going to take me 1,500 minutes, which is 25 hours to make 50 levels. Which, I mean, granted, we've already made like 10, but setting that aside. Which, 25 hours, not bad. That's like a one work week um, if you do eight hour days, but it's still only like a minute per level, which, uh, not good because then it's only like less than an hour of gameplay. We want to have more gameplay, which would mean I would have to make more levels and all that if I do that. So we're looking for, hopefully once we get all the elements introduced and onto the later levels, maybe it takes at least three to five minutes per level at the minimum. That would be uh, ideal. Okay, so player pushes that down. Go through here, I push that up, over to there, push that up over to there, down to there, get through here, you just go down here, push that block. So I want ideally something here uh, to also do. Um, I mean, I could just make them just go through a zip zigzaggy maze to, to waste some seconds, but that wouldn't really be engaging or fun, right? So, what could I do to make this work. boop a doop a doop boop boop Incidentally, I'm thinking about the inverse block and how it didn't work on the pressure plate. What else would I use inverse blocks for, if not for dragging them through two pressure plates? I guess... 
That's like the only thing they'd be useful for, right? I guess maybe because it would work to move over conveyor belts. Because with the weight of a normal block, you wouldn't be able to push a block forward over a conveyor belt. But since the block and you are moving at the same speed for the inverse block, it would work to do. And you can't put an inverse block in a pitfall because you'd fall in first. Um, I guess maybe the inverse blocks are just kind of like blocks you'd have to move out of the way. Potentially. Hmm. Yes, yes. Okay, anyway. Let's let's continue. Let's continue on with this. So if we were to make a like wall of gates here and have a pressure plate out here somewhere and the pressure plate could affect multiple gates and remove both of those at the same time or well no because that's not fun having a element that you just like are pure luck based on. I was thinking, if you put two pressure plates, one of them opens this gate, one of them opens that gate. However, if you open this uh, this gate, you're basically screwed because you can't get a block in there. But there's no indication of which block or which pressure plate to use. And you're like, if you lock a block on a pressure plate there, it would just kind of be like, oh, well, that was fun. Right? Hmm. So we have conveyor belts, we have movable blocks, we have movable blocks, we have pitfalls. I could use some pitfalls, I guess, and just do stuff there, but I'd like the focus to be on conveyor belts. Uh, not conveyor belts, pressure plates for the most part on this one. Um, what else can I do with a pressure plate? I can spawn a block. I could do that. I guess we could have like an area of pitfalls and a pressure plate that spawns a block so you can like make a bridge to get over them. Sure, why not? Let's do that. Got a pressure plate here. And you want to do object to manipulate right there. Uh, it's one object. Also, incidentally, did I? this other pressure plate. That one. Maybe one object? I did not. Good catch. Good catch me. Good catch. Impact. Okay. And so this pressure plate, we need to move its spawn to be... Might as well move it there. That way the player can move some stuff around. Then we can go ahead and add the Pitfalls, and sure, I could change the color of the pitfall, maybe not blue, but at this point, screw it. I no longer care. So, I'm not going to do that for every little thing. So we're going to move the level spawn down to here. I actually don't really care about the is vertical thing anymore either. It can just do whatever it wants. So, we're going to add a couple of pitfalls in here, and I just copy-pasted something. That was not the pitfall. So copy paste, copy paste. I didn't like copy the main camera or the GUI or something, right? No. Okay. So I'll just keep doing this. So obviously the player's gonna just spawn a block in and just move them down and do that, right? Obviously. However, let's let's then add some voids here. 
to prevent them from pushing a block that they spawn past here and just having a bunch of blocks for this area, right? So they'll come in here, do their thing, get through the gate, use this to spawn a couple of blocks to push them back and forth there. And they'll have this block, which they can move to do stuff with. Hmm. I feel like I do something else in this bottom area, though. I'm gonna add another pressure plate. I can actually make another gate thing here. Why don't I? Why don't I? Let's grab a, another horizontal one from here. I'll slap it down there. Nice little gate. Okay. And then let's add pressure plate. Why not? We'll just add it like right there. Fine. And then we'll go multiple objects. We'll do objects to change over to here. Excellent. So that'll erase both of those. I'm doing that. And then. Oh, better yet, rather than it being there, let's make it there. So the player will move the first block, see that it opens the gate, and be like, oh, I need to leave something there. And they'll have to be like, oh, I need to get another block. But they'll be like, oh, I can't, you know, move a block down through here. I'm going to have to move a block here. And go back, get another block, put it there, do a thing like that. So, what would be the best layout to do for another block? Because obviously I have to have one here. But I can't put one like up in a corner because then they wouldn't be able to get away from the corner. Unless it was an inverse block. Ooh. Although, if I have an inverse block while they're near one of these things, they could potentially screw themselves by destroying the inverse block. Which I don't want them to do. But, I could put an inverse block, like, here. And they'd be like, oh, okay. I got you figured out. I can, you know, come down here, push this purple block up, but then they'll pull it down. And it'll be like, uh, what? But well, that's not enough space to learn the inverse mechanic in, I don't think. If it was up here, I think they could figure out the inverse mechanic without too much trouble. But, uh... Also... There's a problem with inverse blocks when you're like up against a wall where you just get pinned and trapped, which isn't ideal. I'm not sure how to fix that. Unless I were to add like, if you press F, you can like shove the block away from yourself by one. which might be the way to go. Potentially. Well, how's the code for this written? I do an update if they're holding a key. Yeah, but the thing is, I would have to create not only that, but also like another, like if they hit like an F button here, then I'd have to go through this whole thing to figure out which direction they're in, which direction to shove the block. So I'm not going to do that. That'd be way too much work and I don't want to deal with that right now. Okay. Really all I need to do is just add another block somewhere. Okay. 
here, for example. How's that? So they have to come down here, push this block up there, up there, over there, and then over there, over there, over there. I think that would work. Let's test it. Sometimes the uh, player or block can get like stuck on a wall like that. Block. Whoa. Block. Why? This is uh, not the right pressure plate. This one is? Yeah. One object. Show update. Why is it not spawning? So it's... Doing is touching. What is touching should be false by default. You come in here, you check if is touching does not equal true. When you do this, is it true? Is one object is selected, right? Yep. Comes into here, it sees that it's a movable block, and it should spawn the block, but it's not. Why? 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 What? Doesn't make no damn sense. Offer to manipulate location to spawn, not transform. Oh, wait. That's why his touching is not what I thought it was. You know, I don't need his touching. Not anymore. Not for this. Um, and then I need to do that one. No. That one. Let's just copy all this, boop, and then boop, there we go, just indent it. Okay, yeah, that's what it's touching is for, it's, it's for the uh, spawn of the block, I forgot. My fault? Gates disappear. Okay. I move this block up to here. And for some reason it's fucking stuck. There we go. This gate goes down and we get out here. About two minutes. Not bad. Granted, I did like stop for couple of seconds because we had to figure out why the pressure plate wasn't working but when I'm clicked off the timer actually doesn't do much so okay let's check and see how quickly it is without an error coming up you know exactly what we're doing how fast can we beat this level
Shit. That's not good. I almost messed up there. Oh no! Oh no! No! I'm gonna have to reset the whole level because I pushed it! Okay, so it takes about a minute to do. I guess I can add a pitfall down here. So if the player does go back, they don't have to reset the whole level and be like, okay, well, I'm a sad sack now. Also, the level didn't reset because we haven't set the reset stuff yet. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and add a, a pitfall here. Actually, no, we're not. We're going to copy a pitfall so I don't have to do it again. There we go. There. Now the, the player has a way to get out. Well, why don't I just set the conveyor belts to be two speeds so they can just walk back out anyway? Because what's the fun in that? And if the player falls down there, it's going to cost them more time, which means they have more time spending playing the game and stuff like that. Yeah, sure. All right. That's fine. Okay, so let's go ahead and add up all the different things that we need to in here. So, first of all, pitfalls. Throw those in their pitfall things. Then we got pressure plates. Pressure plates. Then we need to get the gates. Okay. And that is everything that we want to do with those. We just need to goo. Goo. We need to. Uh, to the spawns and the movable blocks. So one, two, three, four, five movable blocks. Okay, and then we need to make five spawns for them. One, two, three, four, five. Oop. And we just need to place them where they belong. Okay. Excellent, 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 excellent. Now, um, we need to do the dialogue, and that's the last thing we need to do, right? Let me just double check here. That the end level stuff has everything. Yep, it just has the next level, which we don't have yet. Um, this thing has everything here set up. Perfect. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to prefab levels. Bring our new level down to here. And oh no, level two one is going to show up before that because it has a dash in it. That's why. Never mind. Hmm. Got to take away another space. There we go. Now it is in the proper location. Cool. Okay, so I can go ahead and just delete this. Let's open up world 10 1 first, go to the end level, and throw the uh, new level into there. And we can open up. Uh, well, let's see. So I won't be explaining any of the new elements. Good luck is the last thing that we have here. So let's say level 10. All right. What dialogue do we want to have for this world here? So I think level 10 was the first place that had like a pressure plate in it, right? Right? Yeah, there was a pressure plate there. Okay. So we'll do, you figured out the pressure late from the last test. Let's see how you fare with more of them that do different things. <laughs> I think we'll just kind of keep the dialogue a little uh, nice and concise so that uh
it doesn't take up too much time, right? And also, in fact, what I could do um, is instead of taking up a huge amount of space for the level, I could actually put stuff here and just having fewer lines of dialogue and then like wasting the player's time up here. Um, we could use that space instead for experiments, right? I don't know. Anyway, now that we have that world done, I'll go ahead and bring our next one in. And you know what? I might as well just like... Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Darn it. Copy and paste. That's a world... Uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, and then I can just grab all of these, and I can do prefab, unpack. I mean, just go ahead and name all these and do all the things to them, so we have them already pre-brought over. So this is world two, two, level number twelve. Uh, at end level, we want to do level twelve, and we need to rename this one to level two dash two. And then end level should update to that as well. Perfect. Right. Let's do the rest of these. 2 3, 2 3, and 13. Let me check on that one. Yeah, okay. And then the end level needs to be 13 for that one. We can go ahead and just hide that level. And then. You know what, hold on. Let me just go and do level two dash. I'm gonna rename all of them so I don't have to keep making a mess of things there. So four, four, 14, five, five, 15, six, Six, sixteen, seven, seven, seventeen, eight, eight, and eighteen, nine, nine, and oops, nineteen. And then 10, 10, and 20. Okay. Cool. And now, to open these all up and do the end level part of them. End level. Uh, this would be 14. This one would be 15. Start at the bottom, I guess, it'll be easier. <clears throat> Level 20. Level 19. Level 18. Level 17. Level 16. Oop, there we go. Alright, so we have all those dragged over and ready to go. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Okay. Now then. What do I want to do next? So I think I want to use the World 2 to sort of introduce all of the different elements of our world. And that way, we can just kind of use all of our things right away, right? So, destroyer block. What all can you destroy again? 
I think this time we'll dedicate this world to the destroyer block. So, we want to do items for this parent. And then we need to determine where we want our spawn. So we have the attack tower, the lever, the movable block, the enemy, inverse thing. Does it destroy gates? It does destroy gates. Yes. Uh, okay. Actually, it destroys levers too. Maybe I should save this one until we introduce the lever. Also, the inverse blocks. Maybe I introduce the inverse blocks here instead of the destroyer blocks. Well, let's save the destroyer block for later and introduce the rest of them. So, this one. I think we'll try to focus on inverse blocks. So let's let's throw the player off a little bit. Let's spawn them down here this time. Because that's where the exit was before, right? And this time we'll take the end level and we'll put it up here. Oh, oh, oh. There we go. Okay. Kind of really throw the player off their game be like what why am i down here now there's usually the spawn in the upper left but now it's the opposite which would be great for the inverse block right because it's the opposite in fact let's make this level the one that introduces the inverse block the only level where you spawn at the bottom and exit through the top left. Like we can spawn, or we can like exit at the left, like in the lower left, anywhere else. But like, let's just flip the script on them, right? I think that would be very unique. Okay, so we have our spawn point, which is there. What do we want to do to introduce the inverse block? So I think what we want to do, potentially, is we need to have a gate in front of the door, right? New stuff's for free on Epic Game Store. Check that out if you're interested. I'll check that out after this. But now, so what, what do we want to do? We're going to set a gate like right here. Okay, let's go ahead and, do I keep closing that or is it closing itself? I don't even know anymore. Okay. We're gonna do that to get a gate, right? Then we're gonna get our tile palette and we are going to do something like this, right like that, right? Okay. And the reason that this is important is because we're going to get a pressure plate. Maybe. We're going to take a pressure plate and put it like right there. Okay. However, we're going to have also some conveyor belts going this way that are going to be set to force two and go to the right. So here's the thing. If we are moving the inverse block, we should be able to pull it with us up here, I think, at least in theory. If not, we might have to tinker with the mass of the inverse block a little bit until it lets us. But previously, the player had learned that they're not able to move a movable block up a conveyor belt by pushing it. But the inverse block, you should be able to pull it with you which it's weird that you can't push a block up a conveyor belt, but you can pull one, which uh, is kind of weird, right? But anyway, this pressure plate needs to be set to one object, and the object is gonna manipulate is this gate. <coughs> Perfect, so the player can very easily walk over the gate, trigger it, or walk over the pressure plate, trigger it, and be like, oh, the gate 
closed again. So I obviously have to do something here. But they're going to have a removal block that just doesn't work. Also, with the inverse block, it's going to have to be against this wall somewhere. So I think we're going to want to put this in the corner, right? And what we could do is put some pitfalls along the way here that would cause a... Like, did you need to fill with movable blocks? Or, another question. Does the, dis does the black void, does it take inverse blocks? It does. But what if it doesn't? What if because the in block, what if the blocks are inverse blocks, the black void doesn't work on it, right? Because they're the opposite of a normal block, right? So anything that like a normal block would do, an inverse block doesn't do, but then that wouldn't make sense why the uh, pressure plate triggers when it's on it, right? Yeah, I don't know. I think if I put a bunch of black voids here, the player would see this and be like, oh, it's not going to work. Or, or I could have this block spawn near the player and the player has to drag it with them. Except how they get it in the corner is the thing. I guess I could use a conveyor belt that they drag it across so it gets slammed into the wall. I could do that. This is going to be a fun level, I think. Okay. Yeah, let's, let's do that. Let's, let's move this block down near the player. Where's the player spawn at again? Right there, right. So this block will, will have be near the player. And let's sort of make a, a nice little area here. So let's grab that. We'll grab like this and do that. Means I need to get this. No, not that. Uh, this one. Do that. Perfect. So we have a nice little area right there. Player spawns in. They see the block. They obviously try to use it. It doesn't work. So I think what I can do, uh, what I should do actually, is in the prefabs. Let's actually move the player over one. Let's get a conveyor belt here. Let's rotate it 90 degrees upward. We're going to do up. That way, when we hit play, and the player's very first instinct is to touch this block, they uh, realize that, oh, it drags back. So we can go like this. And see, because if we if we get stuck in a wall, I guess we can go like that. But we, we can't we can't move if we're in a wall. Right? So that's the bad little thing there, right? Actually, if I just have this going right, let me, let me check. If I just have it pointed right and like three. No, I want to write two, because that way it will, uh, if I have three, the player won't be able to do anything there. If I... Why? The inverse block. What's your, uh, what's your stats right now? What, what are we doing? Did I make it so the conveyor belt? No. No, 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 no. I made it so the conveyor belts do the opposite to the fucking block. I forgot. Oh. Right. Which means this wouldn't work up here because the, uh... actually it would work. It would work. That one would work. Because the inverse block would come up it. Oh my god, it's perfect. 
Jesus Christ, that's good. That's so good! Okay, yeah, so we do need a, a up conveyor belt there. So that way the uh, player can get free. We're also going to need one in this corner in case the player gets stuck there. So, we'll do that. Maybe I'll also move the lock a little bit away from the player so they have some time to uh, learn it, right? So if we hit play now, they don't just immediately get swooped. They, they uh, touch this and then I'm like, oh, that's weird. So what if I try pulling it this way? And they're like, ooh. Me. And then they can start moving it around and stuff, right? Yeah. And also, let's go ahead and test this area out. No, I got stuck again. Fuck! Yeah, okay. So, so the plan will be, what we need to do is have a conveyor belt uh, somewhere here that we can drag the um, inverse block across in order to get it in there. So I think we'll have it like this. Then we need to have these go down to negative 90. There we go. And then the player's gonna have to drag it across to the conveyor, right? Right now, let's just do this. So the player can kind of like drag it to here, come around here, grab it, drag it, and then the conveyor belt should take it the rest of the way, right? Let's test this little part out. They drag it over to here, up to here, and then get stuck because they're an idiot. Okay. They drag it over to here. It goes up, oddly enough. We bring it back this way. Leave it on the pressure plate, and then we load. Nice. Okay, so yeah, that's that's gonna be the end, I do believe. But how do we want to do the rest? And the inverse blocks are freaking deadly. If you get them on a wall, you're so screwed. Okay, so we have our inverse block here. What other things can the inverse block do? With the rest of this stuff. Not really much, to be honest. Um, it would just destroy things which we don't care about right now. Hmm. Yeah. So. So our goal is to get this pressure, this block to the end, right? Which means we need to protect it. Let me just clear this error. I'm tired of seeing that red there. All right. We want to go probably up here, down here, through here, over here, and then up there, right? So let's, I guess, divide up the level a bit better here. So how about we do like that? Right, and then we can go a little bit further down with this one, like that. Although, we probably want a corner here. And go over to here, like that. So how about that for the level this time around? I could even go like a little bit higher here. I just didn't want to take up a huge amount of space, right? Okay. So, with this, 
move the block through here. We should always have enough space to do so. We just have to do that. So our main obstacle is going to be like just trying to maneuver it through here while figuring stuff out. So I think for the well for the first room, let's just use immovable blocks. If we do like one here, for example, we'll be able to pull it up until we hit that. But that would also mess with us because we'd get stuck. So we need a conveyor belt against there. Just in case, right? Or I could teach the player really quickly that if they get stuck, they're screwed, right? What if I just remove the extra conveyor belts rather than spamming the level with conveyor belts, yeah? Because if the player starts and they immediately go like, oh, okay, and they're like, oh, I'm kind of stuck, I'll have to restart the level and then restart the level. I think that's a good learning experience for them, right? It's a, it's a way to have them learn that, oh, I uh, shouldn't get it pinned against a wall with the inverse block, right? And then I can also take a, a barrier block here, like that, so they have to interact with the block here. So if I do it like this, what the player has to do is grab the block to here, move around, grab the block, take it back through here, right? I like how I kind of bounce off it. It's so neat. I'm kind of just dragging the block through the level. I think I already got the dialogue. Oh look, a new block. I wonder what it does. Why don't you find out? Because I don't think the player's first instinct is going to be just like to move right away in the level, right? They're gonna like look at the level, take it in and whatnot. Take a couple of seconds to figure out what they're going to do before executing a plan, right? Because it's a puzzle game, right? And so the, the narrator will say, why don't you find out what it does? And if they're, if they're looking and they see that there's a block here, there's conveyor belts over here, what am I going to do, right? The reason that perhaps this block, and especially if they see other blocks here, and other ways that those blocks will get destroyed, um, they'll have to be like, oh, this one block needs to be used somewhere else, so I have to take it with me, right? Fun, fun. Okay. Roll up our sleeves. Let's get going. So, they move it here, out of this tunnel, and bring it up with them. And from here, they're going to have to drag it further over. Let's also add one here, just to really get their goats. So they're gonna have to go up and drag it over to here, and then they have to drag it up further. How about up to here? Which will then put them by the block here. So then they're gonna have to go over again. And then they can drag it out a little bit further up until here. Basically, the, the path where this is going to go, they go up to here with the block here, and they're going to have to pull the block over to here, then up to here, then over to here, and then they're going to go up, 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 up to here. And then from here, they can go ahead, since it's here, the block is going to be here. 
they're going to have to pull it over one. So from here over to here, so we can put a block over here. And they're going to have to go around, pull it up again, and then they can get it through this gap, right? So the block will be like here-ish or something, right? Okay. So with the block here, what do we want to do with this area? So this is kind of, this, this first room, uh, I guess this first like tunnel teaches the player that, oh, it does the opposite of what I want. And also potentially the deadly fact that if you get up against a wall, you're screwed. And the second chamber is going to teach the player that in order to drag it, you have to do things like that and kind of think ahead, right? I mean, if they're here, they could potentially drag the... No, they couldn't drag it like further over. Yeah, that room's perfect. It teaches them they have to, you know, manipulate it a couple different times in order to get it to like do what they want, right? Because if it was just a normal one, you could like from here, push it here, push it over here, push it up there, and then push it from there. The inverse one, you have to take a couple more steps to do, right? So for the next area, we probably want the player to let go of the thing here by putting a pitfall here. And because there's a pitfall here, they won't be able to move the block any further until they seal off this pitfall, right? So the player is going to have to go around or down or whatever they want to do in order to get to a movable block that will allow them to push it into here. So we could just do something like that. Very simple. They go around, push it in. They can then drag the movable block once again and they can drag it across anywhere to one of these three slots but we're gonna add some more i need to remember to like when i'm using pitfalls always copy paste if there's already one in the scene so i don't i don't have to drag the level spawn over right so now that they have access to these three spaces for the um, inverse block, this problem comes up, which causes them to have to go down through here to find a way to plug up any one of these holes, right? So What I want to do now, let's see. How should I do this? Do you think I could put a movable block in a cage? I think if I get a cage, the movable block, I think it's too big. I think the cage would, like, mess with it, right? I'll move it down a little bit. Well, I can't move it down any further, can I? Grab them both now, and actually, it would fit perfectly in the cage. Dang. That might work. So, I could make like a, uh, a cage thing here for it, right? And I could have it like remove a cage with a pressure plate somewhere. And you could use the, uh, movable block here oh my god what if hmm 
Hmm. What if I get a pressure plate somewhere down here and I take another movable block somewhere up here that they can get to? And they basically have to use a block to close this hole and then use another block to close like two holes down here. And they need this block in order to do that. So they have to move a block through this again and put it on a pressure plate, which will turn off that cage. Hmm. Or, oh my god, let's do that. Because I was like, or they would just like immediately put the inverse block on the pressure plate and then use a normal block to finish the level. But then they get here and realize they can't use a normal block to finish the level. Oh, oh, oh. this one's going to stump people, I think. This is going to be a good one. Okay. So. Where do I put the block that we're going to be putting backwards? So if I put it up here, and we drag the block up to here, then I could drag it over to here, then I would, damn. I, I, mm, I guess I could remove this, no, because then it would be up against a wall, wouldn't it? Oh no, I got it. Let's take this one and let's put it like here. We move this one over here, up to here, over to here, up to here, over to here. We need one more space actually, up to there. So it gets here, right? The inverse block is like right where my mouse is at. You then go over to here, pull it over to here. And you can go around, move it up to here and over to here, which means after this point you can do stuff. But the thing you need to do is you need to move the inverse block over to here and go around here, push this block. No, that wouldn't work either, would it? I was thinking you move this block up to here. And then I guess you push it in, then you can go around and push it over to here. But again, we wouldn't be able to push it down. I guess you could push it here, but at that time, the inverse block would be here. How do we do this? If only I wasn't limited by space, right? So that's the like double-sided coin of having a fixed camera. You're just you're just limited. Okay, so what if because if I if I remove this right and have it be just a like open field, or if I put a pitfall here um, and then put this one like right here, we can seal the pitfall. Move this one down here, over to here. Then we can push it down to here, over to here. And then we can put a pressure plate down here. Because if I remember correctly, one object, object to manipulate. Hmm. I don't have a cage option. Let's go ahead and add that here. Case, cage. And we'll just copy this. Yay. Okay, so now it has a cage region, or a cage thing. 
Do I have a... Oopsie. Do I have a tag called cage? I do not. Time to add a tag called cage. Okay. Got that. Um, the one thing we do have to think about then is adding a another option in level reset for cages. So, just like gates. Cage. Then we're just going to copy this one. Oh, did I just name it cage, not cages? Yeah, okay, that's my bad. Cool. And then, you know what else we should do while we're making another cage value, right? Let's grab the destroyer script and have the destroyer script also be able to destroy cages. Page. There we go. So it'll just set it to false. We remember we don't want to delete it. Okay. <coughs> and when we reset the level, it should do that, right? Okay. So. Let's look at this one more time from this standpoint that we currently are looking at it. What we wanted to do is remove this one and make that one the end there. Because technically the player could now put the inverse block here, which they have to have there anyway. Oops. What they have to do with the inverse block here they could just go over here and pull it this way, push this one down, push the inverse block over here, grab it down to there anyway, right? But I think the plan is going to be to have the inverse block be here at some point, right? Then we're going to go down and we need to have this go up anyway, because we have to be able to push it upwards. So, because <clears throat> right now, if we have these two blocks here, what you could do is just push one down to here, which would allow you to just take the inverse block from here and pull it down and finish the level. Right? I guess the cage is still there, so you could. You'd have to get the inverse block here somehow, which is impossible. Um, yeah. But regardless, you kind of have to get rid of this cage just so you can get the inverse block past it. But we're going to grab a pitfall and put it here. So you can't drag one past. You're going to have to come up here, push this one down at least, which would then allow you to pull the inverse block across here. And then you can push this one down. And then try to pull the inverse block past, but realize, oh, it cannot cross. So, you could, as I was saying, potentially take this inverse block and leave it on the pressure plate here. Which I don't think you can do. So, let's make it so you can put the pressure plate trigger with the inverse block. We just need to figure out how one of these blocks can end up on there. So, let's see. I guess if we move the pressure plate to here, it could trigger. So, let's see. If we move this one, well, we would have to move this one down here, over to here. We then push it down and over. But then we would miss out on our ability to push it anywhere else. We could have it go here, 
but then the inverse one couldn't go. We could have it be... Well, we couldn't have it be... Well, we could have the inverse block be here. Yeah, let's move that pressure plate right here. So the way the inverse one could get on this is you go here, go up here. You would realize, because that you have to take the inverse block up there, um, you would realize that that disables the cage. Then you would go over to here, pull the inverse block, go again, pull the inverse block, go around, pull the inverse block, and realize that, oh, hey, the inverse block is there now. I can just continue on with my life. You could, you would see these blocks up here and be like, I don't need to touch those. Um, now that the cage is gone, you can continue pushing this block through. Just sort of ignore that stuff, right? So what would that block be for? <laughs> so if you do it the correct way, take the inverse block here, push that one down, take this back all the way over here, the inverse block would be pulled over here, and you would need to use this to seal a hole, right? That would seal one of these holes. But if you just took the inverse block and you sealed that hole with that one, is there a way that you could beat the game like that? If you just... Oh, let's see. So with three blocks... In regard, they have to get the inverse block over here. So we don't we don't care about if you leave extra blocks here. If you have the inverse block here and you use that one for that one, could you get the inverse block past here? You could pull the inverse block up to here, go around and pull it over to here. Yeah, I don't think you could get it anywhere else. I mean, you could seal that hole, move the inverse block to like here, go around, pull it up here. But why would you do that? Is there a way you could move it through anywhere else? I don't think there is. I mean, if there is and someone finds it, good luck to them. But uh, we'll just say that you can't. The image block has to go here. You have to pull it down to here. And you would go through over to here. Okay. So that, this is the way the inverse block would travel. At least until you hit this area, then you can go down and do that. Okay, so in the next area, what do we want to do? Hmm. So obviously, we should do something that can fool you into thinking you can get a normal block in here. So if you get this block unsealed, you can push it over here, push it up to here, push it over to here, push it up to there, and you could try to push it across the conveyor belt and find out you cannot do that. And you would have to restart the level, which is perfect. So, we need to have a clear path for this block to go through. We should also potentially use our void blocks to cause some chaos. And this has to be too wide, so I couldn't close that up to give the illusion you can push that up there and over to there, right? So, if I put a void block like here, you wouldn't be able to get this block away from the wall.
Unless... I put a conveyor belt that goes down. Like one of these. Over to here. Right? So this is a trap for the inverse block. So, you first take the inverse block down to here, right? So it's down here. And you start to pull it. And the player will get pushed off of here, regardless. Because the inverse block needs to come down one to avoid that, right? However, if the player you know, tries to push against the conveyor belt and drag the inverse block, the inverse block will be stuck up there. And they will have to either keep pulling it and get it destroyed or go back and pull it through here and whatnot and do the thing, right? But if it's a normal block, it goes over here, it gets pushed out, right? And the player's like, oh, okay. So that's just to help me you know, be able to push it up and down in various different occasions, right? Okay. So. With the inverse block or the normal block here, we can push or pull it this way. With the normal block, we can push it into different areas. So the inverse block is going to be basically locked on this this line here. So we sort of need to do something in order to figure this out. Because I don't want them to just drag the block here and be like, okay, that's all we can do. Um, Maybe I add, first of all, a conveyor belt here going to the right. Because this could fool the player, right? So if it's an inverse block, obviously they have to drag it across here. There's no reason that they wouldn't do that. Um, because they can't, you know, finagle it around it. And if they have a normal block, they're going to be like, oh, I, I can't push it past this. So I'm going to push it down, obviously, and drag it through here. And then what we can do is have a another conveyor belt like here going up to kind of give the illusion that, yeah, you were supposed to do that with the, the inverse or the, the normal block because they'll push it across here or it'll go up here. And they can get back underneath it and push it back up again, right? In reality, they just got to drag the inverse block across here, over to here. And I really, really wish that there was something else here that I could do with the inverse block to give it some, like, trouble. But with the inverse block, you cannot do anything else. This is all just for this. The only way to do it with the inverse block is to cross over here. Unfortunately. So. I mean, I. I could try and see. If. If we put an inverse block. Like. Over to here. This one's going to drag it into the wall. So if I put a conveyor belt. Like up to here. I could have the player, like, use the inverse block to bring it across the conveyor belt. Let me, let me try that. I, I wonder what's going to happen. Because I think the conveyor belt's going to push the player up, but try to take the conveyor belt down, right? Or try to take the inverse block down. So, let's hit play. I'm going to go to the scene view and move the inverse block over to here. 
And I'm going to grab the player, move them over to here. So if we're dragging the inverse block, that happens. And then, yeah, it just gets stuck there. Okay. I was wondering if the player could drag it across the conveyor belt, but they can't. So that would not work. We'll just do that. So basically, if the player is here, I'm pretty sure the inverse block is going to get stuck if it hits this conveyor belt, which it never should. So that's fine. Um, so what else could I do in this little area here? I mean, obviously, the way to do this is to drag the inverse block here, up to here, over to here, up to here, over across this conveyor belt which will slam it against this wall and allow the player to pull it into the exit, right? It's just there's lacking stuff over here, unfortunately. Which is why it'd be nice to like cut this area out and allow me to do stuff in there, which I could, because there's only a couple lines of dialogue happening here. But the player should reach this area here after the dialogue closes. Hmm. Should I do that? I might as well. It would allow me to some more room to actually do some more stuff here. So we're going to erase these two. Don't need those. We're going to grab this, <clears throat> go down here. <clears throat> we're going to grab this thing here, come across here. And we're going to grab this and go up here. There we go. OK. Now we have more room to play with. Excellent. Excellent. So yeah, with this, we'll be able to move this block over here. It'll go down to here. But you can actually push the normal block. The inverse block, we can move over um, from down here over to here. And then drag it down wherever we want to go. So let's grab this conveyor belt. We just, we don't need that one anymore. So with this pressure, with this this conveyor belt here. It doesn't really do anything for us. Now that that conveyor belt, or now that the inverse block can be moved here and then be pulled downward, right? Also, I just realized there's a pixel missing from the bottom left there. Yeah, well, technically six pixels, but whatever. So the end goal of this room is to get the inverse block here and here. And that's the end goal. So what I should do is magic, of course. <laughs> no. Um, the previous room we used some of the red block things, right? And we used the pitfalls and we used pressure plates. So I think Maybe we just use some more immovable blocks to make it look like certain things, right? So if we put a block here, that wouldn't work. Put a block here because the uh, <clears throat> movable block Right, I can't pull an immovable block out of a wall there, so that can't be like that. So the, uh, the not the immovable block, the inverse block has to be here. We have to pull it down. No. What the fuck am I talking about? The inverse block is along this line. If you move it here, you then have to go around. I mean, you could try to keep dragging it, but if you get the inverse block up against there, you're going to have to drag it that way. Get it back out. You want to drag it downward, which means it can't be there, and that can't be there. 
Put it there and there, though. Go. This is what I can do. So, basically, we want the inverse block to go down at this point, right? However, we want it to look like the inverse, or the not inverse, the, the, the normal block. We want to be able to push it. And obviously, having this block here is like, oh yeah, you can push it against this here, and then you can still have room to you know, move it and then get back underneath it if you have to, is what this is saying. However, this is a trap for the inverse block, because if you pull it down, your player gets stuck in here and you're screwed. So you have to move it down to here for the inverse block, so you can move the inverse block across this row next, right? And so, if we copy this conveyor belt and just move it like down one over one, we then make it so you can't drag the inverse belt or the inverse, I keep saying belt and all this stuff, but you, you drag the inverse block, you can't cross here, you can't cross here. So it has to cross in this middle row or this, this bottom row here, because you'll have to drag it down here and then go around and go over there to that area. Right. And for a player who's pushing a block, it's just going to look like, okay, so I have to push it down to here, go around and push it over to here in order to get past that. Because they, they can't push past a conveyor belt that's going towards them with a block. Um, right. So, it might be easier to visualize this if I take the blocks. So if I... Do like, okay, so we get the, the movable block here. If we grab the inverse block and we would drag it down to here, but it needs to be dragged over to here and then down one to here. Yeah, I think I'll do this. I think I'll move the blocks with me as I'm thinking about what's gonna happen. Okay. So at this point, actually wait, why couldn't you? Just pull the inverse, well, you could just pull the inverse block across the thing there, couldn't you? I'm pretty sure, hold on. Let's hit play and try, just to make sure that this actually works. Did I already try this? I can't remember if I tested it or not. Yeah, that works, okay. So they could just like take the inverse block and just haul with it like that. Um, not ideal, but that's fine. We want this to happen ideally, so I can get another um, destroyer block there. I have them force it to go downwards. And that's not a destroyer, it's a void block, my bad. Um, and then... <clears throat> I can do another one just down here, like that. I feel like this sort of gives an implication. Like, why would these be here if the conveyor belt's going to the right, right? For the player who is moving the uh, normal block, right? Because it's like, obviously, you can't push a block across there. But you could pull the inverse one across. So the people who are guiding the inverse block the first time will be like, oh, maybe that means I could drag the block across, which is how I solve that puzzle to get out. Well, I should drag it down here. <laughs> right? Okay. That's what the plan will be. And so from here, basically both of these blocks, these two, no, it's these two, They'll get dragged and or pushed across here. And we can't do anything else with them. So they're just going to get dragged over to here. Basically into the same block location. At which point... Hmm. What I might do now 
is confirm what these blocks do. So if I take a conveyor belt and place it like that, what's going to happen is obviously the inverse block is going to go up against this wall, which doesn't matter for the inverse block because you can just come up here, move it up to here, continue dragging it across like you would have anyway. For the normal block, it's going to push it over here one, which then you can just, you know, push it up, push it over, push it back up. So that's fine. Now this conveyor belt is the key for the inverse players to know exactly what happens when an inverse block hits a conveyor belt. So I think that is the proper way to teach this problem. And after that, it's just a matter of using this space to get the block oriented how you want it and they get it up there. And then the person with the inverse block from this should learn that the conveyor belts are in opposite directions for the inverse block, meaning to get it to hit a wall, they use these conveyor belts to do so. Bam, I'll take my Nobel Prize, thank you. Okay, let's move these back. So this is the puzzle for this map. So let's go ahead and test it out. Make sure everything works as it should. Okay. So first of all, we're gonna pull this block. Oh, wow, that's weird. I guess uh, the block travels in the opposite direction. Let's go ahead and drag it with us. Go up here. We trigger the pressure plate, which realize, oh, that, uh, uh oh, that's not good. The, uh, crap, I trapped myself. No! Actually, I think I can get out of this by doing this. There we go. Why is it toggled? So anyway, we're gonna leave it like that, and I'll figure out why it's toggling later. But for now, I keep, I keep forgetting this is the inverse block. We drag it up to here, and then we get stuck again because I'm an idiot. And then we just drag it over to here. Drag it over to here. Eh. Gotta be so like ginger with it. Okay, so then we need to move this block down to here. We push this block down. Push this block over here. It really messes with your mind. The uh, the inverse block does. Move this one over here. Move this one over here. Cool, we have this block open and free. We need to move it up and over and up again. And we need to actually uh, move this block down a little bit so it doesn't hit that hit fall over here, which I just got stuck in. So we actually do need to move it a little bit further. Um, so I'm gonna move it back over this way, go down and move it down this way. We drag this across here, drag it down to here, drag it over here. I get pushed off, that's fine. I get dragged down to here. Drag it over here, drag it down here, drag it over here. Nope, not that way, not that way. No, no, stuck, I'm stuck. Shit. This level is gonna be really challenging for people who are paying attention to what directions they're pressing. It's gonna, it's gonna suck. Um, I'm going to cheat and just move the block up to where it should be. Then we're gonna Pull this block up. Wait, did it not? The, the conveyor belt didn't do anything to it. Okay. Maybe, um, maybe that's because when you are pulling the block, yeah, okay. That's good to know. Damn it. Read. Okay, hold on. Here we go. Excellent. Yeah. Although I don't know why it turned off at the last second there, but I, I need to look at that. Why did the? Okay, so we we figured it out most of the time. Um, but the pressure plate. Why did it just? Toggle that so 
Gate and cage is the same thing, right? Did I... Oh, I don't have a... a cage one down here. Where it's like, if object to manipulate is that. We need to remove that line. We need to remove that line. We need to do that. Um, actually, I just need to cut this and then do... Else if object to manipulate dot tag equals cage that there we go so now it'll turn the cage off if a block moves off of it excellent 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 cool 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 so now I'm curious. So someone did mention in a previous stream about locking stuff to the grid. So Unity, how to lock a game object to grid. So... Can I lock an object to a grid in my game? Let's see. Recently I was working on a script for placing objects by clicking in positions. Gotta... Um... In-game snap to grid. How do I go about making an object have a snap to grid feature while in game? I think that's what I want. Um So there's this guy who says uh curve position equals transform position, and then transform position equals math round current position. So I think I would run that in an update. So if I open up the, uh, let's open up the inverse block. So in update, basically, after we do all that calculation, if I did this dot game object dot transform dot position and then do vector three current pos equals that and then i do uh, this dot transform dot position equals vector three then we do a math f dot round and then do current pos dot x comma current pos right y current pos z what is this saying irrevocable member vector three cannot be used as a method what do you mean Not using it as a method, am I? Do I have a mismatch parenthesis somewhere? I shouldn't, right? That one matches up to that. Do I have to do each one like separately then? So like current POS dot x equals, and then do this. I think I'm gonna have to. And then z doesn't matter because it didn't get used. But I can just get rid of vector three and just do current pos like that. So let's see what happens now when I move the, uh, well, I need a semicolon there. Now let's see what happens when I move the block. I don't think this is gonna work how I want it to, or even look good, but yeah, look at that. That's kind of gross. Ew, ew. Um, unity, how to round to nearest, um, 
0 0.5. Hey, first answer, or first link is that. Multiply about by two, round, then divide by two? No. What? It says comma mid point rounding dot away from zero and then divided by two and then float. This we get rid of F there. Okay, so that's what this says to do. Do that. Let's just copy this like that. Put a space just to have it there. Let's test that code out. Like I said, a lot of the problems can be solved if you just search Google for what your problem is. See what happens. So automatically it is way off in space now. What did it snap to? 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Why? What? What is its current location? That doesn't work at all. Another suggestion was to multiply it by 2 and then divide it by 2 which if you take 3.5 divided by that, let's turn off the grid. So if we move this over here, that would be 3.7 times two divided by two gives me 3.7. Yeah, why? Oh no, it says round and then divide by two, which would be seven divided by two, right? Okay. So I guess we could try that. So let's take current pos.x times two, and then we want to do a math f dot round on that, and then divide that by two. Right. Change that for y. Let's see what that does. At this point, I have no freaking clue what's going to happen. Any of these. I'm not sure if it will like affect anything too crazy. Yeah, now I can't even move the block because it's constantly being reset to that location. So. Maybe I need to refine my search a bit. Unity, how to lock a movable object to a grid. You snap a game object to a grid along a point, grid snapping Unity. I think that is just in the editor. That's not going to help me out. You move the objects so they can snap together. Pushable blocks linked to a grid in Unity. That one might help. However, it's so janky looking. It's not smooth at all. But it looks like. Hmm. I think I'd have to work a lot of stuff out. Like, if, if I could get it to snap to the grid, though, at least the blocks, it would help it to stop the player from getting trapped, at least. I don't know if I want to do that, though. 
I think the player getting trapped is part of the fun of the inverse blocks. What was... Why was I even doing this? Totally forgot. I have a dementia or something. Oh my god. I was like, why am I... Why am I doing this? No, like... Uh, it's fine. Yeah, never mind. Screw this. I don't care about snapping into a grid. Screw that. I like the buttery smoothness of being able to push a block and it being smooth. So I think I can just get rid of this stuff that I added here. Okay. My other problem, though, was when you're moving the block, it is not being affected by the conveyor belt, which is unfortunate. Um, so what is happening when we're moving? Um, it's doing this. And then it is... Mm, right. So the, the problem with this is it's setting this value like that. Whereas, do I have a conveyor change? So yeah, we're doing that here. Let's add a new value called pushing value. So a private vector three pushing value equals new vector three like that. And then we can do the pushing value. And then if is colliding is true, otherwise if is colliding is false, we want to do pushing value equals vector three dot zero. So instead of setting this like that, we'll want to set pushing value to equal that. Instead, let's just change all of these values here. See, sometimes I figure out the problem and I'm able to determine a solution for it like immediately. And other times, like with this huge thing that I had to figure out how to determine the direction the player was pushing from, it takes like an hour. So now we have our pushing value, we have our conveyor change value, editing our velocity. And with this, as long as the player, wait, Okay, it's just equal. If it was plus equals, that would have caused some issues because it kept it would have kept building up and just gaining speed as you uh, push the block, which would have been crazy. So let's uh, let's get our movable block here. Let's get our player move him over here and wait for the dialog to stop, and we'll go boop 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 boop. boop. Once again, it, it didn't do what I wanted it to do. Hold on, let's try this again. So, hey, inverse block, what are you doing? It's on the conveyor belt. Wait, hold on. Does that conveyor belt not have a... Uh... Yep, I misspelled right. Didn't I copy that conveyor belt? I did. I did copy that conveyor belt. I misspelled right on the first conveyor belt I put down for it, which means let's take a look at all the conveyor belts and just make sure. Oh, let's, let's unpause first because if I do this now, I'm gonna have to redo it again. So conveyor belt. Okay, so that one's spelled correctly. That one's correct. This one's wrong. Let's go ahead and just copy that word right there real quick. Um, then right, down, 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 right. So I wonder. I wonder if it would have mattered. Since it wasn't going to work anyway before. Would it have mattered? 
Well, I guess while I was pulling the block across here, these ones were spelled correctly. It didn't matter either, right? So this should fix that problem. Character. Move our character first. And let's move our inverse block next. Shit. Let's add a new inverse block that I didn't destroy like an idiot. So now we'll drag it and we get pushed. And it looks like so does the uh, the inverse block here. Can I can I actually drag this across now, or am I screwed? Yeah. Okay. Eh. Maybe I uh... maybe I change that conveyor belt to be like zero point five force. Now it's a nice little gradual thing. Okay, let's try this one more time. Let's not destroy the inverse block this time, I guess. There we go. Okay, so we're dragging it. We can see it's slowly moving that way. Okay, that's weird. Up here, I can be an idiot and trap myself again. Yeah, I gotta keep doing that. Okay, we're gonna pull this guy over here over to this, and then we need to like... This ain't gonna work, no. We're not gonna pull the goddamn block onto the conveyor belt, okay? It's just not, we're not, we're not doing that. There we go. That one moves, we can pull this, and it does that, nice. Man, we're really gonna have to like, make it so the, <laughs> you gotta pay attention. Okay, let me, uh, let's try this again. If I go across here, and then I can pull the block. If I just let go after we're on the conveyor belt, it'll hit the thing there. For some reason, turn the light of the pressure plate off, and then we can leave the level. Okay. So this should work. Um, yeah. Should work. Excellent. All right. So this is level 2-2 two -two finished. Now we just have to add all the different things here. So first of all, let's lock that. Let's do pitfall. We'll grab all these guys, drag it into our pitfall location. Then we need the pressure plates, which are only two of them. Drag those into here. We then need to grab any gates that we have right there. Same with the cages. Grab that one there. Um, then I don't have any portals, I don't have any levers. We do need the spawn points for all the blocks and the blocks themselves. So if I just search for block, I should be able to grab the inverse block. Oops, nope, don't do that, don't do that. Get that out of here. Okay, we need to move them from our prefabs. Otherwise, they're not going to reset properly. We're going to move these over to here. Because there's three movable blocks. Yes, sir, we bobs. All right. And now we need to make spawn points. So previously, when we were making the spawn points, it didn't really matter in which order we made them, whichever we like assigned them anyway, like to the location. But this one, because this one's the first block spawn, we need to make sure it goes to the inverse one so it spawns an inverse block on that when the level gets reset. The rest of them don't matter. They'll just be put wherever there's a block. Like that. All right. Excellent. And then I think that's everything we have for this. We got our auto talking set up there. Our end level, if we unselect that, is set up. We just don't have the next level yet. Hmm. I guess technically... No, I couldn't do that. I was thinking technically I could just drag all of these that I've created into the prefab and then drag those over. But then if I edited these in that area, it wouldn't update the prefab, so I would just do work for nothing. All right, so I think this is going to be our... 
12th level. Nice. Okay. Am I forgetting anything here? We've done the dialogue. We've assigned our pressure plate. We've assigned our pitfalls. We've assigned the blocks and their spawns. Nothing else matters, right? The spawn point is set down to there. Okay. We're good. Let's copy this level. And make a prefab of it right to there. And we can open up our level 1-2 end level script and copy this bad boy into there so it can now start a level. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right, level 2-3, wake up. Okay. So we introduced in level 2-2 two, two, the... I zoomed in too far. I zoomed in too far. The... Uh, inverse block. Now we have inverse blocks that we can use. Excellent. So what do we want to do in level 2-3? We still have levers, the attack tower, and the portals to introduce along with the destroyer block. But the destroyer block I think will be the last thing we introduce other than the enemy. Um, because the destroyer block destroys basically everything except for well, the enemy is obvious. But... Yeah, we want to be able to show that it destroys levers and stuff like that. Although, I guess, I guess there's no real reason to destroy a lever, le le lever other than the fact that uh, the lever can be destroyed, so you have to be careful not to push a block into it, really. Right? Okay. So... Now then. First of all, items. Set a default parent, thank you. Um, hmm. Well, like how as soon as I copied all these over here and was like, yeah, we can probably get rid of this as long as we make the dialogue short. Um, I like how I separated them from the prefab as soon as I did that. That was, that was just great. Now it doesn't even matter. I do this all manually anyway. All right, so uh, how do we want to do this level? What do we want to introduce? The lever would be obviously the, the easiest one to introduce and also have a lot of stuff because then we can use like combination locks for uh, the lever, which would be like, you know, if you flip it certain directions, it locks and unlocks gates. Um, that kind of thing. Which I think we can do quite easily. So, let's have our exit. We'll create that first. We'll make our exit be here. And we will make just a very simple little thing here. And then we want to have a exit gate here, which we will need to change the sprite of to there, and this one is going to start as active, okay. However, we're going to make four, well, let's make just three of these for now, like that, okay. One of them is going to start as not active, okay. So two of them are active, one of them is not active, and they're on the same square. That way we can use a number of levers to do stuff. So let's place the levers next. One, two, three. I'm gonna actually grab these and move them over one more square like that. Actually, I should probably separate them since their hitboxes are a little bit like that. So. Separate them like there we go. Okay. Although I could actually move them just like one closer. Half like that. I think that would be okay. There we go. Okay. So we will just take each lever and assign it a gate. 
Oops, that one is not there. This one goes here, and this one goes to you. Okay. Let me just check the lever script here. Um. Yeah, so in our lever script, I forgot we still have this object to change equals true. Um, so regardless, it was set it equal to true. So we want to get rid of that. Because I think the levers, all they are going to be used for is stuff like... Uh, Uh, brain dead. Damn. Stuff like the doors. It could be on or off. But actually, you know what? Let's add a new Boolean. Um, serialized field. Uh, Boolean. Always start object visible. Okay. So if uh, always start object visible equals true, we want to take this and do that. Else, we want to set that to false. That way we have a, a way to tell if it's on or off for other things. Um, we could potentially, I guess, for the lever, we could link, say, a, a void block to it. Something like that, right? To where we, when we flip the lever on, it turns on a void. When we turn the lever off, it removes the void, that kind of thing. So let's just go ahead and save that, which will need our game to load. And then we can look at our things here. It doesn't really matter for the, well, I guess it does matter for the gate, even though the gate is going to get like non dom anyway. So this one is going to always start visible. This one is also always going to start visible. <coughs> and then the middle one is not. Okay. So then if we just hit play, we can see what will happen. Just realized I, uh, I spawned there. So if we just go here and hit tab, so we can manipulate both at the same time. Like that. But uh, if we just go to one, it is one at a time. Like that, All right? This is kind of like a uh, figure out the puzzle kind of game, right? So once they're all on, it will do that, which is actually not what I want. I want, like, one to be off. So, how do I do that? Do I have to start the lever as on? <clears throat> oh, I know. I think. Do I know? Wait, why is that? Hold on. That doesn't make any sense. Did it not work the first time? First of all, uh, let's, let's move this before something bad happens. So the middle gate is off. So flipping this should turn it true. Which it didn't. And I think I know why. Yeah, that's why. Okay. Yep. So what I should be doing is what I do in the pressure plate thing here, like this, 
However, this is all going to be object to change. And honestly, do I even need this now? I guess I need, yeah. I would need to leave this because I need to have is activated and lever off. But, I mean, I guess it doesn't necessarily matter for this. So if I just cut this, wait, what did I just do? I hit Z, not X. We cut this, we can get rid of this and just make it so we play the sound effect. We basically do the opposite of what the thing is right now. So if the object is true, we set it to false. And then we check if the lever is activated. And if it is, we set it to be false. And do I actually never set activated to true? There. Or did I delete the wrong line? I probably deleted the wrong line like an idiot. Okay. There. So every time it's going to just do the opposite of whatever the thing is selected as. So now. If we test it, it should work how I, I thought it was going to work. That one turns that one on and off. Perfect. This one turns it on. This one turns it off. Perfect. So now now that we have a, a kind of a code lock for the door, where it's it's on, off, on, we need to kind of give the player a hint as to what it does. We need to use levers somewhere else. But first, let's go ahead and grab a uh, updated for the tile thing. So we'll just kind of make like a little room here for these and. I think what we could do is you know rather than just taking this gate and having to recopy it. Wait, but what am I talking about? I'm gonna copy this one. I was being weird. We're going to take these and kind of make a, a gate that seals off these levers to begin with. And we're going to have another lever that you're going to flip that turns them on, right? So, or what we could do is sort of show if we put two levers here, we have one lever turn off half of them, which actually I don't think I can do, can I? One lever for one thing. update this because obviously sometimes there's going to be places where I want to have multiple gates that they affect at the same time right so like a pressure plate okay so we have objects to change I'm just going to make a method called um, private void multi object <clears throat> and then in here, um, I guess we'll want to do if you know, we want to make a I guess another serialized field for a boolean that is multiple objects like that. 
we want to do if multi object equals true. We want to do that. Uh, else, we want to do that. And if that's what the case is, we just want to do that. And this is the case we want to do multi obs like that. <clears throat> just to keep that code a little bit shorter, I guess. Not I guess we didn't even need to really do it. But anyway, we also then need to do uh, something up here. So if multi obs equals true, else we don't want to try to manipulate something if there's nothing to manipulate. I guess I can just do multi obs. It's capital M. That with a J. Okay. Because basically all multi objects is going to do is not what I want. Never mind. We want to do if always start visible equals true else for each game object and object to change um Obj.set active equals with their true. We want to set the true. And down here we want to set this to false. Just like that. Anyway. Uh, if we want to toggle all of the things, we want to do for each game object G in multi obj. What? Uh, um, right option to change. Obs to change. There we go. We want to basically just take this code right here and change these to be G. Okay. So if they're active, turn them inactive. If they're not active, turn them active. Easy peasy. Lemony squeezy. All right. So, now we can manipulate multiple things with each lever. Nice. Very nice. Okay. Okay. Enough of that. So, I think we could set a lever here. And we're going to do always start visible, multiple objects. And we're going to lock this so I can highlight all of these and drag them into objects to change, right? Okay, so working backwards from how the game we played, here's the exit. This gate is unlocked with these levers. This long gate is unlocked with that lever, so I can kind of seal this area off by doing that, that, mm, that one, and then boop, 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 like that, and that there. Little tile map going. Now let's grab this and let's move this lever actually up to like the middle. Why not? Okay. So that's kind of the, the end game area. So the spawn point will probably be up here. That should spawn me right in the uh, the upper left corner, right? Yep. Okay. Excellent. So. I want to do some other stuff with levers, and I also kind of need to give the player a hint for the the, uh, the levers down below. So I think if we were to make 
like right above where each lever would be. If I do something like this, and that's like the first time a movable block has been like in the center of a grid, um, that's kind of like, oh, that one can move, that one can't, that one can. It reflects down, and you're like, oh, maybe that's the solution right there, right? So now that we actually have these movable blocks, we want them to be used for something, right? So I should probably use them uh, in order to progress the level a bit. So what if I make a... I was going to say make a tunnel, but... Let me actually do this. Okay. So let's do that and that. And then make like a tunnel here. Right. And then loop and loop. Then I guess that there. And we can put some pitfalls right here. And just very like simple, like pitfalls, right? Like you don't have to do a lot of movement in order to, oops, I need to unlock that so I can add a pitfall spawn point. Go. Copy that piece of there. So obviously that one, very simple. You just move them down. That way the blocks aren't lost or anything. They're just still kind of there. Right? Um, and the player might be curious why this is an immovable block separated by walls when uh, it doesn't need to be, right? Let's grab this guy, paste that there. Grab this guy, paste that there. And that way the player has to move those down in order to walk across it. So it still utilizes the um, blocks in some way. And it's not just, oh, look at me, I'm fancy. Or, I don't know. Anyway, we can seal those up. What do we do with the rest of the level now? So over here, uh, we definitely probably want, we definitely probably want, I don't know if that. We will want something to do with levers elsewhere. Um, so I guess we can show that the levers affect stuff. Oh, I know what I can do. Oh my god, that's, that's that's brilliant. Hold on. So we can put a thing here, and then we can make a... I'm just going to use this gate bucket. We can put a gate here, and we need to make it orange. There we go. We can then copy this gate and put it up here, but we turn this gate inactive and leave that gate active. And then we grab another lever, bring it over here, and tie this lever to... Mm, mm, multiple objects that are here and here. And I just realized that uh, that always visible check is going to cause some issues. Oh no. <clears throat> what I could do, and this is a little bit wonky. Let's make a list of booleans. And we want to change this to starting state. And then for multiple objects, rather than doing that, we want to start with for each 
a game object in Bob's to change. There we go. Um, we will want to basically check, see what the starting change is. So we'll need a uh, int counter equals zero. We'll do counter plus plus to keep track. So we will check by doing if starting state equals false. I know we're going to have to do counter there. The starting state of zero is false. Else, we do this. No, not that, you imbecile. Predictive text sometimes just messes with you. All right, so let's rock. Objects to change. We always go into here, and we're always doing that. So we're going to start at the zero value. So if the starting counter equals false, we want to do g dot set active equals false. And then if it's not, we want to do g dot set active equals true, then increment the counter. Okay, so what this does is it's going to go through our list of game objects for every one, and it also check our uh, starting state booleans. So for this example, if we go to our lever here and we update or whatnot, we have starting change. So we're going to add a couple of these. So this means false. So lever one is the closed gate horizontal, which is currently off, but two is on. So we're going to go ahead and check the second box. So this one is box one, which is false. This one is true. So as you can see, true, false. Now this might get a little more complicated if we add more. But essentially, for every object to change, we need to have a starting state on them, which would be like true or false, like that. And this is how they will be manipulated. Which means we'd have to come to our other lever, lever three over here, turn that off, and then add four starting states, all true, because all four of those are going to start as true. Excellent. Perfect. So that's what we got to do. So what the player will do essentially is come down here and we're going to learn a lot about levers today because, well, I can't walk over there, but what's this? Uh, perhaps if I hit F, ooh, it unlocked that door, which means I can push these down now. And if I hit this lever again, it will let me pass through. Although really you don't have to hit the lever again. You can uh, just do something, but perhaps, perhaps I'll have another cube over here and like another pitfall here, where you have to push the uh, cube through in order to get rid of that, right? And also, I put another cube there that's kind of um, on, off, on, on, which means this one has to be turned on, right? So it's kind of like a, a little little clue, clue ski rules, woohoo! Okay, anyway, let's just get this set up like that. The block is obviously not going to start there. So do I want to have this whole area open? I mean, technically I could just seal this area off and then just make a couple of blocks in here that you can't move, like I did up here, to kind of give the player a hint. I wonder if I could make a light kind of thing, right? Like, uh, yeah. Let's, let's do that real quick. Um, we got pink on that right there. So, uh, get out of here. Let's make uh image resize 
32 by 32. I'm going to do this. And what color should I make it? I guess I can make them green and red for on and off. So let's start with a... Do I have any neat shapes down here that could be like a, a light? Not really. Okay, that's fair. Um, let's take this beveled edge thing here. That button. This will be our base of it. And we'll just make this all black, like that. And then, let's grab a dome shape, kind of like this. In fact, I might actually get rid of that. Add a layer here. Let's make this in gray, just for right. I don't know why I hit that button, but. We'll kind of add it like that. So it's got a nice little uh, light to it like that, right? Okay. And so what we'll do here is I'm going to merge that down, grab our selection tool here, delete that and then we're going to copy not copy we're gonna fill gray as black or you know what no nah. let's make this red real quick and then let's make not that let's make the base a gray color okay and then let's go back to black and make the and here like that. Or, I don't know what the hell I'm doing with my life. There we go. Okay. So now let's make this thing. Make it gray. Okay. Then, go back to black. And get our little cone thingy. Like that. And then I can just go like this, like that, and I can grab this and do that and that. We got a nice little like egg shaped light. And then we can just grab red and that and we'll just do file I'm gonna move this over here because I'm not sure what I saved last okay it's just the levels that's fine we'll do red light and then we'll come over here we'll grab green a little bit fucking bright though isn't it Jesus Christ I can't even look at it directly um I think it's a little bit darker shall we there we go okay that's a good color file save as uh not red light green light okay nope. close out of that we can then import them into our assets folder red light green light we just want to set these quality here. And that's what I got to do and apply. Okay. So now we have our lights, like little light fixtures. And we can actually come up to here to our tile map. And Now, the thing about it is actually going to be a bit of a pain, isn't it? Anyway, let me just uh, do this, that, that, 
that. All of that. We need to grab this one here and this one here. Just fill that area in. Actually, that's not what I wanted to do, damn it. Okay. I needed this one. This one. And then. Would just be that. Ugh. Fortunate. There we go. Now we have a nice little area with doesn't have corners in the upper left of those, but whatever. That's fine. Using those a lot more than I thought I was going to. Okay, so we can then shut up the phone. Why are you being so loud today? Oh, this game is on my Steam wish list. Is on sale? Yeah, I bet it's in fucking early access though, isn't it? I wish there was like a way to be like, hey, if these games are in early access, just don't notify me if they are uh, on sale, because I do not give a shit about early access titles. Like, after being like burned and ripped off by so many early access titles, where it's like, yeah, this game looks amazing, but it only like has 15 minutes of content, and then it's like a sandbox world after that. Like, I forget what game I'm thinking of. It was like a, a futuristic sandbox kind of game. It, it, it does depend. Like, if it's a game that looks really good or I've seen someone play and it's really cool, I'll get it. Like, for example, Seven Days to Die is an amazing early access title. It's one of my favorite zombie games to play because it's got base building, looting, hordes of zombies, base defense kind of stuff. It's just so fun. Um, but most of early access titles now are just like, it's not so much like, here's our game, we're gonna make it. It's people putting their game up and being like, I'll finish it if I get enough money, shrug, right? It really depends and you never know. And that's the thing, it's just, you never know, right? So I just, I don't like to buy early access titles. And also if I get an early access title, and it's not a game that's like seven days where it's like a sandbox kind of thing. I will play it once if it's like a story driven game, get to the end of wherever the early access is at and then uninstall it and forget about it forever. Like, uh, I'll just be like, yeah, I forgot about this game. The one exception being there was this game called Encased, which uh, was lovely. It's like a top-down, kind of like old-style um, Fallout kind of gameplay, which is really nice. It was actually literally just Fallout gameplay because it had like a, an overworld map where you, like, you would click on and travel between and like you would sometimes have random encounters and stuff like that. But it was, it was really great. Um, I got that in early access, played like an hour, and like it ended and i'm like okay well i'll just set this aside and try to remember to play it didn't remember for like a year two years three years and then like i checked back and i was like oh this game fully released like a year ago i should probably play it so i downloaded it played it, it was great um most of the time I, I either forget to go back and play early access titles after they fully release or the early access title just never comes out at all and it's like well this sucks i guess i just uh paid them like 30 bucks to do nothing. So it's really like a, it's a crapshoot. That's why I don't like early access. And there's other games to play that aren't in early access and whatnot. And I don't really want to sit around waiting for like years for a game to be finished when I have it in my library and I can play it, you know? It's just hit or miss here. So, <sighs> how do I want to do this. Arcage was in early access. I don't remember Arcage being in early access. Maybe I, I don't know. Like, I, don't know. I played Arcage for a while. It was great when I was playing it with friends and whatnot. Like, we were a, a larger guild, and there was a, another guild on the opposite faction. I think the opposite guild was called 
like Urin Thule or something like that. They were just like a massive guild. Like they had like a hundred or more players. Um, they even had like an off guild that was like, because they had so many people in their first guild. And there was that island in the middle of the ocean where you would have to go to get, um, like to like deliver trade goods to for like a really good price. And they would just like camp there or patrol the sea seas. And it was just, it was awful fighting against them because like you would see one or in full member and like the next minute there'd be like 30 of them around. It was so hard to play against them because you'd be like, you'd have to be like, you'd have to send a, an advanced ship, first of all, to like scout the island to see if there's anyone lurking around. And if they see someone there, you're going to be like, nope, call it off, and you have to leave. It was it sucked so badly. Um, I was part of the Empyrean Divine Guild on that game. Until we all fall apart and stuff. But, yeah. It was it was fun at times when we were, like, raiding on that island against Orenthul and fighting them. Um, but we were just so outnumbered. It was just crazy. Like, we were trying to do whatever we could to like get them off the island so we could like deliver trade goods and it was just massacre over and over again or they would just like raid the towns uh, and camp outside towns and stuff like that it became a mess good times though good times but yeah yeah arcade started out good and then they they went kind of like pay to win and stuff like that I remember it being like a huge controversy because it's like we'll never make pay to win stuff go up on the auction house or not on the on the on the shop to you know buy and then like a year later they were like by the way do you want these uh these upgrade things that you can make stuff with it's crazy <sighs> uh, enough about reminiscing though god damn uh how do i do this so now I, I want to have I want to have lights associated with these, right? So like, if I put a light here, a light here, and a light here, right? I want them to toggle on and off with the lever. But if I do that, I would have to messed up. I would have to like add more to it, which would just be so annoying. I think, no, screw it. We're not going to use these lights for this. Maybe I'll use them for something else. Maybe I'll never use them. If I never use them, I'll just delete them out of the game. i to save up on the four kilobytes of space they'll take. Every little bit helps, though. Um, but yeah. I think I'll just let the, the player get the hint from those things up there. Let's go once again and seal off Y. Seal off this little area here. And just make this a solid block in the middle. Not that. There we go, okay. Honestly, I don't have to make these hitboxes in the middle, but I'll leave them that way anyway. Okay. So we have our, our little gate area that comes into this area that gets you down here. What do I do next? Next, next, next. So we've learned that a lever can toggle this open and closed. Um, I could probably put like another door here or a pitfall, to be honest, and have them move a block that's in this area. So, crap, I just realized I messed up the map there a little bit. Why? Why? Why do you do that? There. Okay. Now, let's try this again. What is this? Lighter map? Here. Okay. So, 
I could add another lever and another pitfall. So let's grab a pitfall. We'll paste it here. Let's get a another block. We'll move it here. And let's get a lever here. And then we'll get our tile palette for this and that. And then we'll grab a couple of doors here. And I need a horizontal one now, or vertical one. It's the opposite of what I think now because, yeah, I was thinking like it's a tunnel, so it's whatever. Anyway, so those two are going to be closed. This lever, when you flip it, it will open both of those so you can go back through there, push that down. Easy. Let's add those onto the thing here. Those both be true. Tick multiple objects. Horizontal gate. And the vertical gate. There we go. That lever is set up. Let me check this other lever that I made too, just make sure I have that one checked. Perfect. Okay. So. We'll do that. Now I have plenty of room for other stuff. Um, what should I do? What should I do? Ooh. So the player spawns up here. I think I'll go ahead and make like a division here. And then let's move the spawn point and have the player be more like in the middle of the top here. Okay. So, the player needs to get through here. Let's add another gate. Ooh, why the hell not? I need a vertical gate. Nope, I need a horizontal one. I always forget which orientation they are. That's going to be there. Okay. So. How to do this? I suppose I could just have one lever be here for the door, just to kind of show one lever can affect a door. But what do I do with the rest of the space then? I guess I could surround it by pitfalls and have a block that you have to push to get to the lever. Look at that. So we'll go one here, one here, one here, one here, one here, and then we'll put the lever right here, and then link that lever to always start visible, and this gate here to object to change. And then we need a normal block, which I'll spawn here, which means we want to move the player spawn a little bit over to here. That way it doesn't spawn directly touching the block. Okay. So that should be a simple puzzle. You, you push the block either to that one, to that one, to that one. You go across, hit the button, and then um, you can go past. So, I think for the dialogue here, we'll want to say, some 
things can be interacted with. You can interact using F. If you didn't know. Put it in parentheses, there we go. I could add like a another line to like kind of give that puzzle away a little more. Like, make sure you look at your surroundings by the way. And remember what blocks do what, by the way. There we go. So make sure you look at your surroundings and remember what blocks do what, by the way. So that kind of is a nod to these move, so they are like, yes. This one can't move, so it's like, no. So that'd be, yeah, there. Otherwise, I mean, it's a brute force puzzle with uh, three, which is on, 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 one, on, on, off, off, off is two, and there's a on, off, off, and then there's on, on, off, and then there's off, on, on, and then there's off, on, off, and then there's off, off, on, wait, I think seven combinations, right? Unless I did thinking wrong there, but I guess there's also on, off, off, maybe eight, I don't know. There's like around ten-ish solutions to that, so if the player just brute forces it, it should be fine. Okay. So, we have that area, whatever. Um, and for this area, we might as well just do like a sliding puzzle here. Right, so let's start with a block down here. And you wanna get it up there. So obviously you push up and you can push left or right to get it to one of these slots, which will then block here and block here so you can go up you know push it left or right and then you can push it up again it's a lock there so you push that one over there and there, 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 there. so yeah the, the, the way to get this block out would be go up left push it up and you can't push it left no shoot never mind So, you push the block up, and you push it to the left, and you push the block up. I guess we can do one there, and you push it over, over, and up, then you can push it that way. Let's we'll do something like that, I guess. Because if the player pushes it up in there, they're screwed anyway, so. Nice. So I think this will be the puzzle. It's not too fancy, but let's just see how quickly I can beat it knowing the solution. I guess you don't really have to go this way, you can push it the other way too. Which probably would have been a faster solution. And honestly, you don't even have to like keep this block here. You could push it across and then just push one of these blocks down and push it across, so regardless. And time. So about 50 seconds to beat this level, which that's if you know what you're doing. And whatnot. So, if you don't know what you're doing, you uh, you might be confused with the levers at first. If you don't know which one of these, you might spend a couple, like ten seconds, maybe dealing with that as well. So we're looking at maybe a minute, minute twenty, to uh, do this puzzle. Not too crazy. So, 
some good shit. Good shit. Okay. Let's save this. Let's make sure that all the stuff is slotted and all that good jazz. Okay. Um, like this. We need to reset all the pitfalls. There's no pressure plates, so we need to do levers. Levers will all reset. And then we need the item response with one, two, three, four, five movable blocks. One, two, three, four, five. Then we need to add five block spawns. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. And then we move these here. Oops, that one got off a little bit. We move these here. Like that. Okay. And then, do I do anything with the gates? Or is it all handled by the... I guess it doesn't, I could. It doesn't necessarily matter. I could just put the gates in since they are set to be active and not active. Let's just do gate. It would just be a little bit redundancy here. So, just to have the redundancy in place. Um, We'll have these gates set up to work. Let's just check to make sure that they're all set properly. Active, active, not active, 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 um, active, not active, active, perfect. Okay. So that makes the ball perfect there. Um, we have no portals, no cages. No attack towers, no pressure plates. And the end point is set there perfectly. Okay, let's add this level to our level list prefabs. We can then delete it, open up level 2 2, select end point, and copy level 2 3 into the next level slot. Perfect. Okay, now we also need to go to our game world manager and now that we've added more levels into here we need to add levels to two to one and to three into there so perfect okay i'm gonna wrap things up for today everyone um, we made three new levels not bad i mean considering we spent like maybe an hour or two on making new things or not new things just adjusting our code, like we had to adjust our code for the pressure plate, for the inverse block, for the lever, uh, just to have them make sure we did proper things with them. We also had to edit some like stuff in like the other ones, like uh, the reset thing and stuff like that so that we didn't not reset things properly, you know? But uh, these are progress, these are progress. If we can do three levels a day, um, and we are at 13. So we would take about 12 days, a little over. Let's just round that up to 15 days of working. It's not bad. Not bad at all. No, no, no. So, and then 13 days with a four day work week. That's, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, then thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So we could be wrapped up with this on September fourteenth, potentially. Um, yeah. At least with the first fifty levels. If if things keep going as smoothly, which they're probably not going to after we keep adding new things, but uh see how it goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Or things could go a lot faster because, like I said, we spent an hour um, 
just messing around with the stupid inverse button, or inverse, not button, the inverse uh, block that we had to figure out how to move around the area. That was a pain. Ugh, gross. But uh, yeah, neat. Uh, I will say one thing. I am going to be moving to a new location on the 29th, which is Tuesday. Uh, not next week, but the week after. So depending upon how quickly I move, well, I definitely won't be streaming that Tuesday. Um, depending upon how it takes to get set up, it might be not Wednesday, but Thursday before I start streaming again. Or I might not ever be able to stream again because the internet of that place is going to be about half the speed of my current thing. So we'll have to test and actually see if I like drop a bunch of frames or if it's still buttery smooth. I mean, if I was playing games, I'd be a little more worried. But uh, yeah, I think right now I have like a gig of like internet speed. And at uh, the new place I'm going to be going to, I have like 30 gigs total. Wait, did I say one gig? I meant like I have like a terabyte of speed right now. But other places are gonna have like 30. And I'm not sure about the upload speed there either. Um, we'll see how that goes. I'm going to not be able to stream after I move there, uh, which would suck. I would still create recordings of me um, making the games, though. So you can check those out on YouTube. So Anyway, that's all for me, everyone. Thanks for hanging out and all that good jazz. And next time is going to be on Monday. We'll continue playing. Yeah. Not playing. I don't know why I said playing. We'll continue making our game for people to play. Yeah. All right. Bye for now. Bye-bye.